We have one up, up in this area of the property now. Um, great shade trees, uh, both deciduous. Um, my other proposition was to plant large blueberries across the front and or some other native, whatever I can come across, um, the local nurseries. I know there are some arrowhead viburnums, which are native to the northeast, which are really nice. Um, so that would be in here. There are woods right in here. There are three large oaks already existing here. Um, there were some existing bushes in here. I really don't know what they are. Um, and across the front, I was going to propose um, three or four. Um, they're called variegated willow. They're very small. They're not the big invasive weeping, although they are beautiful. Bugs love them. Um, across the front of this deck, and either more blueberry bushes or something like a winterberry or some other type of berry producing. I like the, elder, the American elderberries are really pretty and the birds also love them as well. So I sent Becky a picture the other day, yesterday I think. Um, I had purchased these bushes already and I didn't want to plant until you approve the plan but when I went out this weekend they weren't looking very healthy so in the risk of losing a few hundred dollars in bushes I did plant them. No problem popping them out if you want them somewhere else, but I did not want them to die. How do they look now? <laughs> well, um, they're not so droopy, but I, the willows are not looking very happy. <laughs> Could be lack of sunlight and too much water, too, which well, is not in your control. That is not in my control. <laughs> but the problem that I'm having in this area here, and I'm hoping that the river birch will... Um, these two river birch at least will satisfy the two to one for, for losing this tree. I know somebody, I, th I think maybe it was um, Steve that had suggesting planting some large, or one of you gentlemen, large blueberries along yep. here. It is very, very wet, like, like these folks over here. We have a wall that's again probably 50 years old that has slowly gone from here to here so the water is literally all in that lawn area. So planting anything there, it's kind of a crapshoot whether it's going to live or die. I'm, I'm not really sure. High bush blueberry should do pretty well there. Yeah, yeah. that's what I have. They're a large, a large hybrid. Uh, they're not a hybrid. They're a native. I mean, sure they were native, but they are a large. So I'm, I'm hoping that they survive. Um, but there were some other ideas. Like I said, the arrowhead viburnums. Um, would work. I don't want anything too tall. I'd like to be able to get something really shrubby and low so that we can still see the lake, um, if that's okay with you. Okay. Any, any comments from the board? Anybody in the audience like to speak? Oh, uh, one oh. suggestion I would make with the river birch mm -hmm. is don't plant a single river birch. When you buy your river birch, look for the clumps. Yeah, they, they come in like usually clumps well, of three or four. Some yeah. of the people have been doing what they call hybrids. Oh. It's a fib. I like the What clumps. they're doing is taking the bunch, which is how they normally develop, and they're cutting them and then rerouting them so that they can sell the individual plant. But the natural plant itself yeah. is a clump bunch. Yeah. I agree. It, that's and from a hybrid does not grow as an individual plant. It grows as a group. And if you go down by wetlands where you see that plant all yep. the time, you rarely ever see a single. single. I do have one. They're, some they're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Right. Anybody in the audience would like to speak on this issue? Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Are we not going to discuss the building itself? Which we had a I thought we with. I thought we sent them away with the uh, with the planting with plan. the, with the challenge to, of a planting okay. plan. Can we also discuss maybe? Steve, do you remember? Yeah, so the yeah. the in order for us to accept them the, having yeah. this deck, we needed the right um, that's reclamation of Paul. Yeah, I mean, it's a pity that uh, that it sort of came about like this because way back we probably would not have approved the 
the building right. in the first place, but that's water under the bridge. So at this point, we're just looking at what we can do to make the thing livable. And so I don't really have any problems with the thing that they've done. All right, do I have a as motion? As planting to, anyway. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll move to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Hey, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say one other thing. Okay. Um, we, we didn't talk about the drainage pipe that's coming down from the the top of the property down to the lake. Or is that being removed? Okay, good. I just yeah, that's going to sure. be tied into the retaining wall, the drainage. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's just I, from I our will fire. second his motion to close. Okay. All, right. All in favor? All right. Do I have a, do I have a motion? David? To one of the others. What? Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the plan with this planting plan. Um, I would also suggest that we add some conditions to just make sure that uh, this stuff lives, I guess. <laughs> So. <laughs> the, the things I wrote down from the last meeting too was to add some crushed stone, mm -hmm. remove some of the soil underneath the deck, yep. add crushed stone, and make sure there's gaps between the boards so yes. water can infiltrate. Yeah. Well, what we can do is put a note in the order of conditions that um, there won't be any certificate of compliance before two full growing seasons. This is a determination of applicability. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That won't work. <laughs> We also discussed that the um, adding a condition in our determination that the deck couldn't be covered and converted into a Correct. structure yep. because we are approving this with the waiver because it was a deck that allowed for infiltration. So we can add those conditions in there. And we can add conditions for you know maintaining the plants, but it's, it won't be a certificate of compliance. Yeah. Yeah. Did you complete the motion? No, we closed the public hearing. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I move that we approve the project based on the conditions just outlined by Becky. Okay. I'll second it. Dis a discussion? Because it's a request for determination yeah. of applicability. Um, for the determination, I'd recommend the positive 2B. There's no yeah. resource area delineation approved. Positive number five, subject to local bylaw. And a negative number three it under wetlands. negative three. Yeah, negative three because it's not exempt under Wetlands Protection Act mm -hmm. because of the distance to the water um, with the conditions. So moved. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Just ask that you guys sign that, please. Let us know how it goes. Come down and see us. <laughs> there you go. We have a couple minutes before we can open the next okay. public hearing. Do yep. you want to have Raul talk to yep. Oh, you're up. Well, if we get you some speaking engagements to go around to the other lake associations, will you go? <laughs> That's what I'm, I have meetings on Friday for other road associations, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, that's another project that we handled a while ago. Uh, Raul Ricard, 53 Beach Ave, here on behalf of the Cedar Lake Association. Um, so uh, just I, I'll give you a quick update of what happened last week. I, I know that Rebecca and, and Steve and Dave were on site, but we did do a site visit with uh with MassDOT of the site uh and first started at the very top of the hill to look at the damaged area of the first sewer or the first not sewer the first drainage area they put in place and how much it has eroded i encouraged mr barnacle to drive to, to walk to the top of the hill but he, he declined me <laughs> nicely but nonetheless um the rest of us did get up there and look at it um they clearly understand it needs to be fixed, even though it was put in place just, what, six months ago? Six months ago. Um, I didn't think it was so that long. They, so um, they promised to come back with a plan not at this meeting, but on the 7th, Rebecca? June 4th is our 4th, next right. meeting. Fourth, right, okay. Yep. On, on what they're going to do to make that more containable for the water coming off the pike in that area. So in the meantime, they've scaled it back a little bit. They've done a little bit of work. I don't know that they've done anything since we were out there last week. Well, we were there I'm, on Tuesday last Yeah, week. and I'm not aware that they've done anything either. The engineer, BSC Group's going to come up with a, a better plan, so it'll hopefully infiltrate some more water at the top of the hill with a bigger kind of splash pad 
splash pad riprap apron. Um, they did add some additional straw bales down at the bottom oh. to help with anything that might be eroding down. But there's a, a pretty significant channel that's developed coming out of that that basin, and it's uh, I mean, a significant amount of stone that has come down the hill, yeah. not into the water, yet, not into the lake yet, but approaching it. Yep. I'll say that. Yep. So. Yep. They're clearly going to have to repeat the steps they did already to fix that and then at least pull back the gravel that's been washed down so it doesn't go into the lake. But uh, he assured us he would have a plan at that conservation meeting to review with you. Okay. On the 4th? Yep. On the 4th. That's what he said to us collectively that day. Yep. Right. Okay. We then, uh, while he was on site, took him across... Uh, to the original um, swell that has been damaged near Mr. Lincoln's property. And he said, we have a plan in place for that. We questioned the plan like you guys did at the last meeting. Um, and we decided we're going to walk it. And we walked all 1,000 feet all the way to the top of where that drains out. And the problems are even more persistent than what is visible down low. Mm -hmm. um, he clearly, clearly said that we need a short-term plan to fix and stop the bleeding there, but that the longer fix of that drain would have to go into a longer-term budgeted project under funding from the state to do that. He wasn't going to be able to handle that in his repair. Did he give you any idea? I, I hate to ask you this question. How, what's the long term? What, what yeah, let me, let me get to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. step four, what I'm going to cover yeah. today. <laughs> so he clearly, and he walked all the way up there with us and, and saw the damage and the additional asphalt that's eroding at, at the very top of that drainage area down. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked to him about the hundred so odd feet of trap rock that he's going to go, and we asked him to come back with a a better plan to alleviate that problem in the short term and either replace that culvert or that swale or come back with some sort of proposed plan. He assured us he would have a plan also on the 4th for that that would be reviewed and hopefully approved or questioned by you guys as well. Correct me, you know, Steve or Dave, yep. if I'm missing anything or, or Becky. We then took him across to the, uh, to the north side of the area, and, and I insisted that he look at that area, which I believe is probably maybe the first time he'd looked at it. Maybe he'd looked at it on his own once, but I don't believe he's I don't ever think he's been on that side, yeah. Uh, there's another swell on that side of the lake uh, near the Hamilton Pond that is asphalt-based that is crumbling away and eroding down the bank and falling into the into the water that eventually goes into the lake through the tunnel. He agreed that that was unacceptable <laughs> and that that seemed like a relatively minor repair. But to me, it's going to take the same amount of repair as it does the other swell on the other side. So he agreed that those are the three critical items, which were the three critical items you put in your letter back in September. And they were supposed to have a plan for you on October 2nd and have yeah. yet to do that. So he says he will have those short-term fixes and a plan for this committee on the 4th. We can bet as to whether mm. we'll have it or not, but that was what he stated at that point. Um, we then talked about the long-term plan, and we continue to work with our state representatives, Ann Gobi and Todd Smola. Uh, did get just, as, just about 10 minutes ago confirmation of a full meeting that will be held at the district office in Worcester of MassDOT in which Senator Gobi, Todd Smola, uh, representatives from this committee and Becky, uh, ideally our town administrator should join where we'll have MassDOT and our representatives there to talk about the long-term project. If funding is needed, we're going to need Todd Smola and Ann Gobi to fight on our behalf to get that funding raised, plans drawn, and a budget put together. Mm -hmm. And as I've said from the association perspective from day one, I'm willing to wait for a longer term plan if we get a date, mm -hmm. if we get a commitment of what's going to happen, as long as they fix the short term problems that are eroding silt and, and dirt and stuff into the lake right now. So I think that meeting is our best shot to state our case. Uh, in front of the whole committee 
Uh, as you know, Todd Smola's walked the site already, and Senator Gobi's representative also walked the site with us that day, along with DPW as well. So we've got everybody aligned to hopefully start moving toward a long-term plan and budgeting approval for that. It's not going to happen in their normal maintenance budget, I don't think. I, I can't speak for their budget, but um, I'm okay if they come up with a budget plan that's approved for 2020 and it gets executed in 2021. I'm okay with that as long as we have a commitment from the association. I'm sure from your yeah. standpoint, you'd be comfortable with that from a conservation perspective as well. What's the date of that meeting, Ralph? So the date of the meeting is now confirmed I, I, for the 28th of June at 11 o'clock. Let me just get his email here. This is MassDOT, myself meaning Lucas uh, McDiarmid, who's Ann's uh, assistant. Senator Gobi and Todd Smola's office have all concurred on being at that meeting on that time and that date, which is 11 o'clock on the 28th in the MassDOT District 3 office, which I'm not sure of that address, but. It's down by Norton. Okay. Bill Morton plant. So I'm confirmed to be at that meeting. Um, I likely will have the president of our association or another representative with us, but what Todd Smola has recommended is that we don't overwhelm them with too many people in this meeting, that we, but we do have representation from uh, conservation. We have representation from the town, uh, ideally the town administrator, so that they can also fight for the budgets that might be needed, I guess and from both state offices as well as MassDOT. I will so. not be able to make that meeting. Steve, can you make it? Uh, it's possible. I'll just have to check. So, okay. Dave? So, if you can, I'll go. Okay. Okay. Rebecca, were well, you I don't know. confirmed for that? Yeah. Do you, can you check with our town administrator? He's right behind you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm checking my camera right now. Okay. If I'm available, I'll definitely Okay. Uh, what's up? You are available. Okay. So I'll confirm with uh, with Senator Gobi's office tomorrow and, and Lucas. Let them know that we plan to attend and who will be there at least, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. I would suggest, and maybe this is something Rebecca, you and I can do, is to take some current photos of what we consider to be the longest, the longer term plan meaning the retention ponds, getting those mm -hmm. cleaned up and repaired, getting those swells truly. There's more swells around that area than just the two that are damaged. There are others that are leading a lot of debris into the lake as well. So I think- I can put something together. I think we need to have, I'd like to maybe start that meeting with an overview of the project and the problems that we've seen, uh, both from the town's perspective as well as, a, as a Cedar Lake, and then let them come back with what they feel the game plan should be. Sounds good. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Uh, I will not be at the, the, the conservation Four. meeting on the 7th, but I will have representation here. I'm going to advise whoever's going to show that we, you mean the we expect you the mean 4th. The I keep saying the 7th, okay. the 4th. Um, I do, I'm hopeful that he'll come back with some plans that you guys can start to work on, and <laughs> we'll remind him of what those are if you guys can't. Okay? Great. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Any questions? No, not from me. Anybody else? Yeah. Right. Thanks, brother. That's it for tonight. Thank, Thank you. you for your Thank you. The check's in the mail. We'll keep you, keep you, is it the, the commission check for working for us is in the mail. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are at 6.30. We have notice of intent, DEP number file number 300, uh, dash 1033 continuation from May 7th 11 McGilpin and Apple Hill Road construction of a single family house associated appurtenances and installation of sewer and water okay how you doing good how are you good Peter Ayotte 11 McGilpin Road do you just want to go over what the revisions are or I can uh, do it yeah, for you so you have a pointer there, too. Uh, okay. Um, so they added the water tank uh, right there in the back. With the idea of uh, having everything kind of run this way and drain to that back there from the front. 
instead of having a tank in the front, um, you know, having this one in the back and having everything run so that it's going to go around, come around, and go into there. With the idea that having the tank in the front would just be too much, you know, chance of moisture staying in there because it's going to be sloped right there and with the foundation um, with potential of the water kind of getting stuck in there. So um, the engineer thought bringing it around here and having the tank in the back so that it can drain freely was the idea. And then the swale or whatever right there down that side of the driveway, uh, like you guys had asked. Okay. Becky? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so, right, we did ask for a dry well, something for, you know, collecting water from the gutters and downspouts. Um, I mean, it's not shown with pipes going to that, but the intent is there that it will collect there. We did ask for the swale at the end of the driveway to collect anything coming off the driveway. Um, there, is, there isn't a detail on the plan, but it does have the, the description here for whoever's putting this in on the plan so those are the two items that we asked for what we also discussed at the last meeting was going back out and taking a better look at the wetland to see if it had the ability to serve as um, vernal pool habitat which i did go out last tuesday um the only member from the commission who could come with me was was dave so i did walk the area i took a lot of photographic documentation um i can show some of the photos that i took there um, most of it was what we could see in the photos that I showed before, um, mostly herb herbaceous. A lot of grasses growing in there. can tell that the, the canopy's probably changed and, um, you know, a lot more light in that area. I did find it, the intermittent stream that runs through there, which was flowing water um, coming in from the north and kind of exiting the south under McGilpin. Um, off to the side, and actually I'll pull it up because it's probably useful to look at. So you can kind of see, you can't see the stream here, but the stream does come this way. This is what's really open with all the, the grass kind of growing in there. Um, it was moist. There wasn't really standing water in this section. Um, you can see, it's hard to tell in the picture, but there's the outlet here, and you can't see it in the photo, but the stream was flowing water there. Um, and then there's, you know, some areas, some pockets that did have some standing water. Um, the only standing water that was out there was about one to two inches the deepest at that time. Um, there was a, a, a deep muck layer, but no... Um, there were a lot of floating clumps, too. There was the floating clumps. Yeah, you can see them here, too. Yep. So this, I mean, this area, you know, was the only thing that kind of stood out that if it, if it had more standing water um, or even had the capacity of holding probably more standing water could potentially serve as somewhat viable breeding habitat um, you know looking at this uh, going back and you know looking at the certification for for vernal pools you have to show um, physical characteristics of the wetland and you have to show um, either obligate or facultative species that are breeding there so obligate species are mole salamanders or wood frogs um, which require um, you know more specific breeding habitat um, the facultative species are things like your spring peepers, um, toads, things that'll use a variety of wetlands, um, not just things that are considered vertical pools. So I, you know, I didn't have a strong feeling when I was out there going through this area that it, you know, served as viable breeding habitat for wood frogs or mole salamanders. Um, I did reach out to the Natural Heritage Program, um, the vernal pool biologist there, and did um, talk to him and provide some documentation as well. Um, you know, he said if there's only about an, an inch or two of water out there at this time, um, it's not serving as, you know, breeding habitats for, for wood frogs. He didn't have a, a strong concern for it. So that was, that's my feeling on it. Um, we also, with the plan, we are providing that 50-foot buffer vegetated i think that one of the things we talked about at our last meeting was you know some type of monumentation there to make sure that that area stays vegetated to that resource area i mean we're going to try to collect a lot of that runoff and infiltrate that but having that good vegetated buffer will also help with that in the future as well so okay paul looks like we're d they're doing what we've asked them so yeah. i don't have any problems with, with the plan no, with one exception. I had commented two weeks ago about the driveway location. And it still disturbs me that that driveway location is still in a position where all the effluents from the driveway are going to be able to make their way into that body of water. 
You mean at the end of the, the driveway where it's connecting to the sway along the road? Yeah, it would be because yes. it's going uphill into the right up into the home. It's seriously close to the buffer zone. It's easily within the hundred foot buffer zone. And I think that that wetland is very large and deserves protection. And I'm not sure that we have to have that driveway located where it is. We, we heard your argument two weeks ago, but I really think that the driveway could be reconfigured such that it's further away. The water is going to have a chance to build up steam because it's coming down a significant amount of elevation and it's going to carry with it all the crap that's on that driveway and dump it into the wetland. Despite despite the buffer zone along the edge. The other thing is, is if you followed this contour, I mean, would that actually make the construction of that driveway easier instead of having, sitting, using the slope, having it be a straighter shot and, and following the, the contour? The property is sloped and the driveway is gonna slope no matter what, probably. Yeah, yeah. There's really no other way that I think to, to make that happen. I, I don't know if there's some type of drainage I could put at the end like that to take care of that problem but the problem is the whole property has a slope to it and there's no other way to make that driveway not slope out to the road we have another project site where we had a, a swale of check dams along the side um, when we had this concern that could be an, an option yeah something's going to have to happen at the roadway anyway because of the yeah, what? The issue we have right yeah. now. That's a, that's a good question, though. What? Because it really just drains right down the side of the road and into the wetland. Yeah. Yeah, I think a, a swale or something with some riprap in there, you know, trenching that whole side down there, kind of like they do now Fisk Hill for all that runoff with the uh, pipe going underneath. Well, what's the swale going to how, How's the swale going to show me with it? Just along the road, just along the road edge. Yeah. Do you remember? I think DPW went in and. Yeah, they it cleaned down. it out. Yeah. Yeah, in front of the stone wall. Yeah. Ooh, that's what, that's what's right going to have to be there. Um, Babes, maybe. What? Babes Lawn Care, I deal with him. He's yeah. kind of... No, I mean, would it be your responsibility? Oh, I, I assumed it would be. Okay, because if it's not on the plan, we have no assurance that it's going to take place. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in the past, normally that would be... Um, DPW and they he would get his driveway approved through in the old days Greg Morris with right. with whatever crossover you needed for mm -hmm. a pipe the location on the, is what? still what we're talking about no I know I'm 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 not um, debating the location I think that the swale might actually be off his property boundary it's part of the That's town what, yeah. right away yeah. but if he's putting the home in then he's got to answer for for the wetland as far as how it's managed, the water's managed to it in front of his house. I don't see anything but a stone swale, swale going down there with a with a pipe yeah, under that's the what I kind driveway. Of in. Question of the location. Um, it as as you move the driveway up the hill, and it's not a wetland issue. Um, I get concerns over visibility of people coming over the top of that hill. Mm. Uh, so that that's a concern that I have. I would I do need uh, proof from you that that you don't because we have a 90% upland bylaw in the in Sturbridge, Mass. Okay. So I need you to show me proof in writing that this lot existed. Uh, Becky is saying that it's grandfathered. Um, I need proof of that to vote for it. I asked Gene Bubon, the town planner, yeah, because it's under it's a zoning bylaw. I need, I need proof from um, you know of of the plans and when they and when that exact plan came into being, so that I know that it's grandfather. That's not a problem for you because it would be 1980 or whatever. Yeah, and and the other thing is the math. I don't know the math. Is what. What percentage of this um, 
of this lot is upland? Probably, I mean, really all of it has a slight pitch to it. I mean, at that 50 foot buffer. No, uh, it, upland versus wetland. Oh, I don't. Upland versus wetland. Our bylaw requires that you have 90% upland in order to have a buildable lot. Okay. Now, um, so I, I'd need, I'd like to see proof of that. Just um, all you have to do is go over to, um, you know, and get a copy of the plan when it was transferred. Okay. Not a, it's not a big deal. It's not like it goes back into 1856 or something. Um, <coughs> so it should be available. And, and the percentages. What percentage up is upland? If if it's more than 90% upland, you don't have to do it. Okay. But um, I don't believe it is. By looking at it, it looks like you've got about, you know, 60, 30. So, uh, so I'd, I would need that in order to um, to approve the plan. But and as far as the road, I, 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 would, I would have no problem with it being where it is. I'd be afraid of uh, Moving it pushing it up, up. to it. And, and making it unsafe. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, those are my only comments. Is your intention to leave any of the trees at the the front of the property? Uh, it wasn't. No, I was okay. thinking landscape. Okay. Well, you had committed to the stone wall, right? Oh yeah. Just for the cut. Yeah, through. that would yeah. stay absolutely. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience like to speak on this? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll take it. I just have a question. Polly the, Courier, 13 McGilpin Road. And Tad Courier, 13 McGilpin. So that, um, I don't believe the dry well was a discussion that we were part of at the last meeting. I don't remember hearing Yeah, that. I don't remember a tank. Where did that come from? Um, <coughs> but it, to me, from that map, it looks like the water's flowing uphill to that tank. <coughs> because that whole thing comes on an angle down to the water, that entire property. Do you remember it? Yeah, we did. Uh, we talked about dealing with the, the runoff from the impervious surface. So oh. um, I don't remember if we specifically the, said a tank. I think we said a dry well. We said dry well from the, the house. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So yeah. that's the solution right. for that. These are, these are the contours right here. So this, yeah. this is actually going from this corner of the house. This is going downhill. Considerably. Okay, but then how it is, is it the coming back? from the front? Um, in the front, they're dealing with it by uh, putting in this swale. Is my understanding. So where does the runoff from the front yard go? So I, I think he's he's planning is it's what he said. All pipe around yeah. The back. Yeah. Okay. So there's a gutter That's here right? that goes That's to the back. The, yep, the gutters are all piped down into the ground, run around, and all. Go uh, we need you. Yeah, we need you on mic. Um, oh. <laughs> Grab a chair and get up there with that. Yeah, we don't want to. This is cozy. <laughs> um, so the uh, gutters in the front will all be piped from the front around that right side and all tie into that dry dry well in the back. So the dry well is lower than it ha would have to be, right? Um, yeah, it, it'll be lower because it pitches down into that corner. Yeah. Um, so it all, uh, like he was saying, you know, that basically that whole lot just kind of yeah, pitches down. towards the wetlands yep. from the wall. It's right. kind of like an open ravine, really. You can tell by when you drive down the road going to the property, you're going down a hill to get there, and then you're going back uphill, so it's kind of a swale. Um, there's a lot of runoff already. Um, anyway. Did you have any? I have I have talked to the Board of Health about a couple of things, but do you want to well, ask just, your questions? Uh, yeah, first? I mean, so um, Ed, you brought up the uh, the grandfathering in with the uh, upland rule, and uh, my question there was, um, can you grandfather in a lot versus a house? I mean, it wasn't a house; he's going to build a house. Uh, it's the lot that's grandfathered, I think, by our um, um, for the development. Yeah. Yeah. See, if there was, but if there's any change to that lot. If they take a half a foot off the back of it, or if it was combined with um, <laughs> Doc's house, house lot and then reinstated in recent times, then it, he's not qualified to build on it. 
Okay. But it doesn't appear that that's the case. I'm, I'm just looking for uh, making sure. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. And um, the, the Becky, you mentioned the vernal pool. Um, and I last night I opened the windows and I heard peepers. And yeah, I know they could be coming from Spencer or whatever, but I think they were coming from there. And um, Oh, they certainly were. Yeah. But that doesn't make it a vernal pool. Okay. okay. You know, so, but how do you certify it? or is it Well, I went in this afternoon and got wet and went around. I have a yellow um, pad that I got a vernal pool class. Mm -hmm. And um, you stick it down in, in the water and um, you will see, at this time of the year, you will see fairy shrimp mm -hmm. against the backdrop of the yellow. And, and there were there were none at all. If I went down behind Brad's house or over behind Lindsay's house, um, you'd see them at this time of the year. So. And if there were spotted salamanders, there should still be egg masses? There'd be egg masses. And there's only about an, an inch to two inches of standing water. Yeah. So the, the peepers are not necessarily, they don't demonstrate that it's a vermin. No, one. they don't, no. I mean, you can't use them as a, as a facultative species, um, but you, there is, there's a certification process through the Natural Heritage Program um, where you have to document and using facultative species, um, there's a lot more information you would need to provide with the facultative species method because they're not an obligate. An obligate is a, a direct indicator of vernal pool. Facultative species will use, they'll use lakes, ponds, streams where there's fish, et cetera, too. Okay, thank you. All common people, not commissioners, they don't know the scientific phrase like facultative and obligate. You should tell them the difference between the two. Because when she says obligate, it means if it's there, it's a vernal pool. Yeah. Right. If it's obligate, it means it's a potential indicator. Mm. It doesn't mean that you have a vernal pool. It means there's a chance. Now you have to go looking for other obligates in order to verify that it's a vernal pool. You could have five or six facultative ones. All that means is they could potentially be there. Yeah. And they might indicate a vernal pool, but they also might indicate that the vernal pool is on the other side of somebody else's hill. Right. So the words are important because they're really isolation words. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Um, anything else? Yeah, I just, um, we, we talked about the map and the 75 feet from... Uh, there you go. You had it. You're pointing at yourself. Yeah. So this is uh, this is the line of the wetlands. Correct. So even though <coughs> there's what vegetation, wetland vegetation. I mean, wetlands aren't a straight line, right? So is that the 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 distance from this? What is the isn't what's the setback have to be from the wetlands? 100 feet, 75 feet? So there's there's different things. There's buffer zones, and that's our regulatory jurisdiction. So 100-foot buffer zone under the Wetlands Protection Act, 200 foot is also the local buffer. So the, the setbacks that I think you're referring to is within our bylaw regulations, we have a 25-foot no disturb for new sites, and we have a 50-foot no new structures. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but that doesn't add up to 100. So what we've done with this plan here, that's within the hundred foot buffer zone. It's within the hundred. Now I'm, I was making fun of you. I got there. We go. <laughs> um, that's a fifty foot right there from the wetland, and it it, it isn't straight. Right. Don't get me wrong, but the but in fact, um, if you look at it, it's marked. Um, it's marked pretty well, and there's the hundred foot right there. It goes through part part of the house. So, but that's acceptable to have that. It is. It is acceptable with, without any other option. <clears throat> if, if, like, for example, if you were building, and you and your house was your lot was a part of it, we'd make you build up out, outside the hundred feet. But where it doesn't have another option, um, you know, we allow it. Question on the water. Um. No, I'll just say what I talked to Linda about. Okay. So I um, had a discussion with Linda Kokalis about a couple things just because I was curious. And because of the hill and the runoff and everything. Um, 
and she had a couple concerns. One was, um, so the removal of the vegetation to build the house and make the yard, what kind of erosion is that gonna cause? Because we already do have a ton of runoff from the top of the hill, um, and that's gonna go into the wetland. Well, the, the canned answer, you want me to answer the question? Sure. The, an, the answer is that um, we require um, hay bales and erosion management through the entire construction process to um, mitigate uh, against the erosion. And then what about it sinking? That's not going to prevent anything from sinking in and under the hay bales <laughs> into the... Well, that we, we have to... She keeps on them. She'll be out there. and They have to entrench a silt yeah. fence, too, and that gets dug in. We check that. Yeah. We have um, pre precautions in our conditions in our permits that whoever's responsible for the project site has to, you know, continually maintain those. We check in on our project sites, too. Okay. Um, and then uh, one of her other concerns was, too, that so the sewer's coming downhill from Apple Hill. Um, to this house because this house is like an equal distance between in height between the top of the hill and McGilpin Road and Apple Hills higher than the house So how is the sewer getting back up to Apple Hill? So the way it pitches it's oh. gonna it's higher on this right side of the house and um, You know it pitches down across the Apple Hill and that pitch It'll be away from the house far enough where it's going to have a constant pitch from that corner all the way down to the road. But there'll be a pump so too, there's right? No pump? The engineer said I wouldn't need a pump. The way he figured it and looked at it, there's enough pitch there. Uh, there's one spot kind of where. Use the clicker, please. Um, yeah. Oh, here. Thank you. Yep. Um, right about here, I'd say. It's a little bit higher. Um, you know, the ground kind of goes up, so we'll have to grade that a little bit more you know, on the lower side, on, on the back part. But there's enough pitch there because really Apple Hill, uh, my property on Apple Hill, has almost the same pitch as the property at 11 McGilpin. Um, you know, it's that steady. So from this corner here of the house, if we keep it on that right side, it'll be high, en high enough to go all the way down. Um, and the sewer, I believe he said it was six feet or eight feet deep. So this you know, pretty good distance for us to be able to get that and make that up, so. Hmm. Doesn't look like it when you're out wandering no, around. It no, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. I wanted the same thing. Yeah. Um, so if there was a pump, who would be in charge of it? Would that be him or would it be the town? Be, well, he'd be responsible. Yeah. The owner would be responsible. And then I guess the final question is, you're the only one with sewer on McGilpin Road. What about all of us with wells in case that lets go? as they do quite often in town all over the place, the pump. Oh, the pump lets go? Yeah. Oh, that like, how does that affect yeah. the groundwater and our wells? It wouldn't. No. It would it'd affect the surface water, but it wouldn't affect the, um, and it would be, be known right away. Isn't that the right answer? Yep. So, so I guess then. Um, your well is, what's your well at? About 600 feet? Yeah, it's deep, at least. We didn't make what? It. It's deep. We didn't make it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know. But Linda did say that she would like to see, um, or they would like to see the abutters and where the existing wells are on the plan. Because there's no abutter, abutting buildings on the plan as of now. There's no abutters what? No abutting buildings on the plan right now, buildings or wells. Right. So she, she thinks that they will like to see that if, when it comes across the Board of Health. But there aren't going to be, right? I think, I mean, if, it's, this is I think it. if it's town water and sewer, it's not going to Board of Health. I don't think it's required to, but I well, can double so check Well, so then how that, does that so. affect all of us who have wells and um, leaching fields? I mean... I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. He's exempt, but we're at the mercy of maybe his sewer not being quite right. Well, I think that would go through and, uh, DPW and yeah. Viola. There, I mean, Viola Water Department and sewer yeah, is I don't responsible think you're, um, for all of that. I don't think that might be a question. Ac for that. Actually, the fact that he has water and sewer um, is a plus for that surface water. 
Right. Period. And um, the fact that you don't have it, like I don't have it, is just that's a fact of life. That it's to where it's gone, and um, you know, uh, you know, if you everybody in the room raises a hand, you'll find out who has it and who doesn't. But they just they just had a hookup on the other, and they came up with an angle, and and it's working for them. I don't know if I, I didn't satisfy you, but I mean, yeah. I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah, nothing else. Although I would like to see where my house is, and I guess we talked about that a little bit. I would like to have our lot line has not been plotted yet. Yeah, he's coming back to do that. I'm hoping this week. So. Yeah. And like I said, if you guys wanted a fence, whatever you wanted, I'd put over there. You know, I want to make it as easy for you guys. I don't want it to be stressful for you. I'll let you pick the fence up, whatever you want. <laughs> That's it for us. Anybody else in the audience like to speak on the issue? But doesn't want to? <laughs> um, on that, like motion to close the public hearing. Was there some additional information here? Uh, well, what about the 90%? I'd like to, well, that's what I'd like to have, yeah. I, okay. I didn't hear anybody, you know. Oh, I, I agree. I, d I need that firm in, you know, not just, uh, I need to see it on the legal document that, uh, that that lot is as it was and that it is grandfathered therefore because, and, and as I say, I'd like to know the percentage upland and the percentage wetland of the lot. So. Do we need that before we? Well, that's, that's under zoning, the zoning bylaws. No, that's something that, no well, but it's something that we can have confirmed through the planning department, I think, and we can have him present that information to the town planner and she can c confirm that no, for us. It, ha it has to, before I will vote for it, we'll, we will have Well, resolved. that's what I'm saying. You can have it resolved through the town planner. I think she's the one who needs to really review it because it's under the town zoning bylaw. Well, but if you want that I, before. I want that before. And, it, and it, you know, it, the applicant is responsible to get us that information. Although the town put the bylaw, you know, Yep. Under zoning, I, and I no, understand I'm not, why. I'm not disagreeing, but I think she needs okay. to confirm that. Yep. So we need a continuation. Yep. We'll need a continuation. It's you right mentioned you. the swale along the driveway. Is that something you want to see on a plan, or are, we com are you comfortable with well, that yeah, being so worked out with DPW? Yeah, okay, yeah, this down sure here. I also want to understand, it, this, is, this is a trench with gravel in it that's supposed to infiltrate. Is that... Is that what this is? Yes. Okay. Um, I think there's an I can, line Is there a detail there? of that? Yeah. Well, uh, there's just the description right here. Okay. 24 by 12. Yeah. I don't know if that's sufficient. I've never had to make one before, but if you guys require something different, I can make it different. We, we, we've seen things that size on the side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what, what does he need? Are we cl very clear on what he needs to bring to close well, where are we Where are we on the uh, driveway? David wants to m him to move it. Um, I'm more comfortable with where it is, but it isn't a, you know, a wetland call from my point of view. It's more of a safety call because I was there today. I had my car there in the hollow. So. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. We don't want to have it closer to the top of the hill probably be from a s safety reason for people coming over the hill. I understand your point, but so so we would like to see um, something done at the base of the driveway to deal with the runoff. Right. We need to understand if DPW is responsible or if the homeowner is responsible for dealing with the drainage along the front of the property, along McGilpin. I believe that's most likely in the right of way, and it's DPW. DPW but I can yeah. confirm okay. that. Yeah. Well, we sh I'd like to get some kind of comment from them that they're going to deal with it because I think it's a problem right now for 
oh, it will be a problem later. It's a problem already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The whole road is a problem. It's got a road under it. They've yeah. been fixing it for years. Right. Right. Uh, all in favor of a continuation? He nodded. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Peter. Thank you. Peter, I'll give you the date and time for that. Okay. Well, it's actually, well, June 4, 645, but I'll email you, too. Thank you. Unless your engineer needs more time, then just call Becky. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. 179 Main Street? Yep. We are now to old business. 179 Main Street. I'm Ben Tully from 179 Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, ongoing um, sedimentation basin creation. What Becky just pulled up there, I had uh, Callisto Burton from Burton Engineering walk the property with me. And uh, we went over um, how to contain the runoff. So he came up with this when you see it on the plan, like it doesn't really do justice. Like it's, I'm trying to think who walked it. I know Becky walked it with me and Steve walked been, it with me. And we've all been out there a few times. Yeah, <laughs> some peeking <laughs> over the banking, some, you know, it's kind of grown in now, but we walked down. Um, it's extremely large when you look at the scale of it from end to end. So it's gonna encompass, you know, the quite a bit of that of that back runoff and we're going to channel it through those two darkened sections which are stone riprap if you, if you see them um, right on here. the plan there and, and the upper one which is where it naturally runs off now but we're really going to contain the entire thing with this basin um, there's elevations that it shows what we got to excavate to and then pile the dirt up on the sides so you know when you go there after it's done during a rainstorm, it's gonna the rain's gonna come down that hill. We're gonna reinforce those two areas with the riprap swales, and it's gonna go into that basin and then you know absorb itself into the ground, or you know eventually it'll uh, it won't make it up to the extent of the properties. So just to let the commissioners know that this this is a new plan. You haven't seen this one yet. This one came in this today. This one just came today, yes. Yeah, I just yeah. gave them the printed out email from today to look at okay. since they haven't seen it yet. So I don't know if you guys want to want to a chance to read that. Um I had Burton do all of the calculations. Do you have an extra one? I think I passed them all down. I think I had an extra one in there. Is there an extra one there, Maybe somebody Lynn, you want to take a look at this? Lynn? If you want to take a look at this, this is the, gives you the, some of the runoff. Or, or grab that one. Yeah. So all of this is calculated um, of the entire runoff, and you can see in the, those two different areas, the checkered area and then the little uh, dot circled bathroom tile type area. And uh, the basin will take way more volume than what that area um, of impervious material um, what does not absorb? Yeah. I'm sure you had this. I'm sorry that I was un unable to. Uh, no, I'm not really sorry. I missed the meeting, but I, I, I'm sorry I missed it. Um, what about that pipe that um, bubbles up underneath? That's Where referenced I, in here. Too. Okay, so is it yeah. just just down from? Can I get up? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, actually, oh, you have a pointer it? over there. Oh, really? yeah. yeah, it's right yeah. over there. Black. Yeah. 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 Technical, Becky. I don't know how to use this stuff, but yes. So that basin is right here, and the drainage line comes right through, and this is the pipe that was boiling up right there. So it encompasses that also. So we're going to create a riprap splash pad right around that pipe, which is detailed in here. And when we excavate out, it'll expose that. We found most of the top of that corrugated pipe. Uh, Steve was there when we kind of dug it out, and Becky saw it. So we'll, we'll dig it all out for, to create this basin put that riprap splash pad and it'll it'll spill into this big giant swimming pool of a basin. Ben did did Callisto say if they 
the size of the basin they um, counted for that pipe in the in what's yes. coming out that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He calculated it through. So it's if you look at there. the calculations, it, it has the runoff through that size pipe. So they have that to. They, too? Yeah. So they okay. calculate the diameter of the pipe and if it's full and they they, they calculate it uh, that way. So yeah. So it includes that in the in the area that's checkerboarded off. Look at this. Was anyone from Burton coming tonight, or? Uh, Callisto sent you that email that they were unable to attend, and then I sent you an email after that saying that I would be there. Okay, I mean, right, I did ask Could have been after today. Could yeah, have been I mean, after. I think it would be useful, and I think I was trying to say that for the, for the engineer to talk about the design, yep. so we can understand, I mean, one, we're not engineers, so that, that drainage I, I'm analysis. An, I'm an engineer, so. Right, yeah. but um, we, we just want to make sure, because we know that we have the issue with that and make sure that we're we're fully fully encompassing the runoff yes. and that um he can confirm that but with with all of these calculations so he calculated like i said all of those two areas plus the runoff from the plus pipe the runoff. and and you know created and you see the, the actually the size basin is the largest one that we've put to drawing it's 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 huge it's about five feet deep is that it, I mean, I looked at this quickly today, so it yeah. looked like the... So when you go from the very bottom elevation, can it... I, I don't know if you can... Can you, can can you see in. any elevation marks on that? Those look like one-foot contours, maybe. It is, yeah. Yeah, we're going so to that, 679 to 682. So that lowest spot is way to the left, Becky, because it kind of pitches that way, too. So the 677 is yeah. that lowest elevation. And the top of the berm is 682. So you're correct. It's exactly five feet from that low spot. On that side. Yeah. yeah and Just about on that side. And, yeah. And about three feet from that spot, from the other spot. Because, you know, the mm -hmm. land naturally pitches towards that way. Do those calculations include the roof runoff? Uh, the roof run the drains from the roof runoff. So none of the, none of the roof drains connect to any any type of drain that's going through there. None of the roof drains. They just, some of them truncate halfway down, the roof drains. They just. So where does all my water go? There's literally down the square feet a flat roof. I mean, it, it, we don't, I mean, we don't have any pipes that ran it out to that parking area, so. You have, you have so it just comes at least six of them coming off the building that go down into the ground and into the ground what it looks like to me well there's no the, pipes that go into the ground. I, uh, the ones i saw didn't go into the ground yeah none of them go into the ground yeah they go across the ground they just they just stop yeah, they, they just stop, stop. like <laughs> the same as what your gutters on your house do they stop Yeah, it's, it, well, I, I don't know if I'm trying to, I just had the same question at the same time, because I, when I went around and looked at them, and I thought that that drain over on the other side over there, um, that they must hook up with that, but then I realized that they weren't connected. Uh, I think we need to calculate that in. Yeah, I mean, it just initially reviewing this in his email today, I guess I, I had some questions for him. I didn't have time to ask those questions today before our meeting. Um, I, I'd like to know that he's sized it correctly to account for the runoff here and some type of more confirmation and a narrative from him. And that also that, you know, he's, he's proposing that it's going to contain a two year storm. Um, and then he also says that they didn't, you know, they didn't take into account how fast the water may percolate into the ground, and he's assuming that the basin will empty within a day. So I think we just need to make sure there's just not assumptions they're doing, that they make sure that, you know, he's done the, the background for this. Um, not being an engineer myself, you know, I think most of the time it's, it's useful to have someone else look at this. Right. Yep. Um, you know, the stormwater bylaw regs that the town has does say that the, I mean, the town engineer can review these. It might be useful just to have someone else look at this. Um, and I guess the question I'd have for them too is, you know, looking at, you know, knowing if, if the, the water's gonna percolate and if it's going to um, empty within a day or so, and then thinking if we have, you know, 
back-to-back 10-year storms what's going to happen because he did say that you know the the spillway will flow into a level spreader the purpose of which is to disperse the water over the area yeah. if it happens that a channel develops later on we can just address it with check dams yes. so um i mean initial thought i guess is if you know so what he means is if that them. two year see see this channel that's right here that drains yep so coming out that and that's that little spillway area so after that the water would have to go you know our property goes if you move the picture further that way our property yeah. goes all yeah. the way to yeah. this limit the property line right there so we still have so we still have we have all of this property to still so if this basin doesn't work we have all of this property to do some type of check dam system here yeah i uh, guess i'd just like to know from him what the likeliness is will this basin cover two two year storms back to back and are we already overflowing and therefore Maybe we need something else now. I, I guess those are the questions that I would ask. I would ask the engineer. Mm -hmm. um, that would be useful to know because I think if it's easier to do it now, um, maybe we need to, you know, make sure we're doing it correctly. I mean, I think this is a big improvement over the last plans we've seen. I think definitely it's showing that we'll, you know, be capturing that runoff more. But if we're only sizing it for a two-year storm. In. This would be the largest sedimentation basin of any property in the town of Sturbridge. Well, I, 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 I've never seen a basin this size. I mean, it's based For, off of your your surface that you're capturing right. the runoff. Oh, I understand. So yeah, the square the footage comes through. But when you look at the basin that was just approved for, you know, Dr. Estrepo's building, that basin is about one tenth of this side for all of the parking, peri you know, area paved behind where. Mm -hmm. um, the ice cream places and all, all that area. There's, there's one basin right there. The, yeah, this basin's ten yeah. times the size, more than ten times the size. Right, and I'm not saying it wouldn't work. Yeah. I guess we just need that confirmation from the the engineer, and that, that would yep. be a, a follow-up question I would have for him. See, the thing is that we watch this. You know, I've been I've only been in town 50 years, but um, Me too. this is the this is the worst um, water displacement problem that we've that I know of. Uh, since they built the Westfield Dam, uh, it really is, it's really, um, and I, it's not, well, not all pointed at you, that's for, for sure. You know, it's, it's the whole commun combination of that hillside that has changed. We, you know, in, in walking the property, it, it's interesting because, you know, when, when Becky and Steve were here, th there's really no, we walk down right about here. And we walk down the hill. There's a stone wall that starts at our property here and comes this way. And the dirt has built up against the stone wall. There's really no runoff from the gas station or anything entering our property at all. It's isolated. If anything, it's going the other way to um, where that culvert crosses the right. cul-de-sac mm -hmm. at the yeah. end yep. of Blueberry Lane. So I, I had initially thought that we were getting some runoff from the other property. We're not, that, that, that stone wall keeps out any runoff that comes in here. And, and the stone wall comes this way and this way. This is all, if you walk it, it's all lined with stone walls. Yeah, so no, I know it is. It, it, you know, having that size basin, you'll see when it's built, I mean, it, it's huge. The, the, the distance from there to there, when you, when you scale it on this drawing, I think this one I printed out is a, a 20 scale. So, you know, an inch would equal 20 feet. We have 10, this, this, this basin is, is like 180 feet long. Oh, wow. Okay. Right, so, we don't, we don't I mean, have that, a hard copy, so it's hard to yeah, you know, you it's, can kind of scale it a little bit here. I think but. if you, yeah, I don't know how you can, I, I just printed this out, my plotter, but again, it's, this is, this is an inch equals, an inch equals 20 feet. And if you look at that, I mean, that's gotta be close to nine inches, which is 180 feet long. Yeah. It's wow. it's a massive size. Now, and the um, the edge of the um, parking area is going to be burned to go so that it it, it does show a berm yeah. on here. It it, it shows to yeah. yeah. There, there. It says what does that say to um, fixed and located to direct the stormwater to proposed detention. So what he's yeah. saying is, we want the water to go where it's going now. We want to make sure it goes where it's going now so that when we put these two riprap swales in, we don't want our sedimentation basin to fill with silt. 
We right. want these two riprap swales to take care of that. So when the water comes down, so we're going to line those, you know. That's going to be fenced off, right? It's guard railed off at the top. It has no. Wood, I mean, the, wooden the basin. The top. You're going to have a, a fence around the basin. On in the woods in the back. Yeah. I don't know that they would necessarily be required to. I know in certain situations, depending on the, the depth of it and how long it would hold safe, water, that it would be a safety, safety hazard for but kids. I don't think anyone can get there, though. Right. I mean, not easily. The, I think the engineer could answer that question for us because yeah. I think there's regulations depending on the size of it, the depth or whatnot that they're required to. Oh. So we can ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Put that down. Yeah. And I don't know that we're doing ourselves any favors making it even bigger because we're losing all of this forest back there, too, right? Yeah. Yep. And there's a tremendous number of trees that are coming out to, yep. to produce this. To put that in. Yes, there is. Like I said, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. I think we need a little more confirmation from the engineer, of, you know, about the... The runoff and that he's capturing the pipe was included in the calculations because i don't think he specifically said that in the email um i mean it, and he did say as well that if there is an issue you can add you know some check dams in later on in the vegetated areas too well, let's get some input from the audience anybody like to speak on on it yeah except we don't know what to say it says you don't have the topography of the area, and uh, maybe you should do that because it's coming. This is all running downhill into my yard. The letter from Burton Engineering says that we'll get the topography data, finalize the plan to be submitted to Concon prior to the next meeting. All right. And what does uh, where is your forcing the water over a larger area mean? Does that mean more water is going to run downhill still? So, to, so water gets absorbed into the ground, right? So well, when it's you not getting absorbed into the ground now. I think I can clarify. So yeah. after it, um, after the basin fills up, it'll overflow right here, and there'll be a, a spreader here. So the water will come down like riprap stone. We'll hit that. It hopefully, will infiltrate, but it allows it to spread out a little bit slowly so it doesn't develop a, a channel which then forms which has formed and, and carries it down faster so that's the in, the intent of that and i think that's what it, they're referencing in there so so what you're saying is that, that the water's coming off the parking lot this line here right is a stone wall which has quite a bit of elevation change to come up so the water's like jumping over the stone wall when coming to your it's yard Do you, do you want to show the... I've never seen where a, um, a stone wall was an approved means of stopping water. It, it's, it's, not an, it's not an approved means. means. What we're submitting is an approved means. Comments you go through the chair, yeah, and, yep. and you haven't introduced yourself yet, sir. No problem. Buck Smith, 9 Blueberry Lane. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Buck. Well, I just, I, I, I hear these comments about the, the basin being huge, enormous. Well, that's fine, but... It's fine that it's huge and, and, and it's enormous. However, um, if it doesn't handle the runoff, what good is it? Right. No, that's what we're working And, and without the roof calculations into it, um, as we somewhere we have uh, Chad Maramo's uh, calculations, where I, I believe it was brought before this committee, yeah. mm -hmm. where we had 48,000 gallons an hour between the roof and the parking lot going over the embankment. Thank you. Well, one of those things we have to be careful of is we don't want to paint the whole thing with the same brush because we have two sources of water that are coming down Blueberry Lane, we suspect. One of them is from this gentleman's property mm -hmm. and the other one is from behind the gas station because there is an intermittent stream that comes off the side of the gas station right. that members of the commission have walked starting at your backyard and walking up. Mm -hmm. So there are two separate issues here. He's dealing with one of the issues, which is what we see here. And based upon the location of Blueberry Lane, it's further downstream from him. So I, yeah. we have to make sure we don't paint him with the same brush as Oh, I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm just addressing some of the comments that, that were made. 
Um, yeah. No, I knew I knew where you, where you were going to go. <laughs> okay. Um, oh Lord. Um, so you know, Chad Maramo's calculations were made off of a 25-year storm, and verified. I believe the, the the norm in the in the town is a 100-year storm. Am I correct or no? Or does that change? I don't think it's the what? norm. Yeah, that's the norm. But it is asked to be looked at too. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know what the multiplier would be because right. I'm not an engineer. So I, 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 I don't know what the multiplier would be. So the, the town stormwater bylaw has provisions for development and redevelopment. So redevelopment, um, I mean, it has specific language in here. So I asked that of the engineer to look at our town stormwater bylaw, look at you know our wetlands regulations, Wetlands Protection Act, um, our stormwater bylaw, um, goes back to the stormwater um, management guidelines under DEP. So we refer to those. So they need to size it according to those guidelines. But for redevelopment, um, one of the, the standards within our town bylaw says retain the volume of runoff equivalent to or greater than 0 0.08 inches multiplied by the total post-construction impervious surface area on the site. So that's what we need to ask the questions too for the the engineer are we are we meeting these but we are looking at a redevelopment site too so new development is one inch multiplied by total post construction impervious surface so i guess my point was being that there's 48,000 gallons on a 25 year storm right i didn't know what the multiplier would be to take it to 100 Right, I, I don't know that either. So that that, that, that was my whole point. Yeah, yeah we don't. And I don't think that, that um, it has to be designed for a hundred-year storm. But would it be at a hundred-year storm? No, I could look it up, but I don't. Yeah. Well, let's just guess it would be exponentially more. Yeah. 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 Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Just we'll throw that out there. Yeah. Um, I know there was some talk from this commission about turning the or, or throwing it back to the engineer about putting the parking lot back to gravel. I believe Mr. Barnacle brought that up the last uh, meeting. Yeah, but that's not what their engineer has decided. Okay. The optimum way of handling the runoff. Okay. Right. We we did yeah. say to them mm -hmm. that they might need to look at alternative methods if they couldn't do something yeah. back here, and that could be one of them using the existing parking lot for for infiltration. So. So, <clears throat> the existing parking area that we're talking about is right here in in just these just this hacks, hash section. This other little um, tile section, I'll call it, bathroom tile section, was already paved. This is stuff that we have, this, we have billings over the top of this. If we turn this to gravel, it would be packed so hard that it would not create a pervious situation and have the water absorb okay. into it. So you Probably would <clears throat> increase the runoff. Yeah. Okay. And it would definitely increase the siltation runoff. Yeah. Even though it would be silting our own property, it would still silt. The these areas here, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That was where there was a pine grove with picnic tables. No. Where was where was the pine grove? The pine grove was up up, up the hill on the side. On the side. Yeah. yeah. It was it was up over here. Okay. So the pine grove is like right on the outskirts of where the gas station started now. Yeah. And that and, went back and to, to behind the gas station. To Mr. Barnacle, the the pipes, the first pipe um, that you see when you go behind the gas station is the pipe um, which is nothing to do with the gas station. Right. Completely nothing to do with the gas station. Oops, right off of 131. Right. Right off of 131. The second pipe um, is the gas station's pipe, which brings it into the back of their uh, retention basin. And then the third pipe is another road pipe, according to, that comes in at an angle into the, um, and none of that. The only one that gets to uh, Lynn's far field is the, um, the runoff from the um, state road, the first one. If you look at everything else, if you look at the cuts in the backwoods, that's that's the one that um, that's the one that's going to her house to to the 
to the far side of her house. The one from 131? Yeah. Yeah, but how long has that been there? It's when, when they, they did it, they revamped it when the um, gas station went in. Because what? this was never I think there's more than that. I think she's got two sources. Um, when the water comes down, blueberry by Mr. Uh, please introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. Becky, yeah. could you bring up the aerial photograph? I'm, I'm not trying to. No, I, 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 yeah. I get it. Yeah. We're still at Jim, 38 Farquhar, unaffected by this. Just need to say. Okay. Um, I believe that. Uh, Mrs. Peterson has, when the water comes down Blueberry by Mr. Smith's house, right. and it goes down by Chad Maramo's house, it goes across the street mm -hmm. to 10 uh, uh, Blueberry Lane, which is Paul Richardson's home. And then it goes behind there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where she gets it. Plus, um, what number is Bill's house? 41? 43? 43 Farquhar, the corner of Blueberry and Farquhar has a huge pipe that pulls out water from some of from 131 and it, it flows out and I think that also overflows as I've seen it because I've walked that piece of it with some of the residents. I think Mrs. Peterson is getting it from three, possibly three sources, yeah. not just the 131. Yeah, I was just talking, I was, yeah, I was, referencing the the 131 that is is flooding the back of her field where the sheep where the sheep are that's that's what i was you know but i think and i think she's also getting it though yeah. from the blueberry flow that whole that crosses yeah. if you if you come on a on a rainstorm and i mean a real rainstorm you can look stand at the bottom of blueberry and just look up the water doesn't come down blueberry yeah. And onto the rest of the roads, onto Farquhar, the water comes straight down, and it does takes a takes a turn. I mean, it's so visual; it's it's amazing how it does it. It's like the road is just sending it right out to the other side, hmm. and it's not coming down the road. It's not puddling at the end of the road, which is strange. Priscilla, is that where DPW put the pipes in to address those? That pipe was put in by DPW on f 39 and 43. Um, here. Blueberry, uh, uh, Farquhar, that sit on right, corner of Blueberry. Over here, somewhere that pipe, pipe goes behind 43, and it and it flows out and it goes out. Mr. Richardson is next door to that house. Yeah, and it, it goes through him, and he has gotten his part of his uh, land near his driveway is eroded yeah. from this particular yeah. latest flow of water, and I think Mrs. Peterson is getting it from that source as well, from what I could see when I walked that area. Yeah. Right, that's where every, everything in this area is, is, is draining to this, this yeah. moment here. Yeah. So. This may this seem was, like a di digression, all, but it isn't. We have to understand all, the whole. Yeah, yeah exactly. Area too. That's, what that's all a wetland yep. area. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we gotta move forward. <laughs> Sorry, well, I mean, I mean, we're, we're trying to. Yeah. I, I understand that you have multiple problems yeah. going on but our basin will be obviously designed per the guidelines of right and i think and we just beyond it actually need that confirmation from them and we can ask those 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 questions can, yeah can we get a a roof um mm -hmm. plan for the where the downspouts are and what the just where it's going if it's going to the back parking you, lot you have one what I had to submit one to the planning board when I can reconstructed the building seven years ago. You had to submit exactly where the roof drains were going. So, so do you have that? I wasn't um, involved with the planning board at that time. No, the memos were not showing. And in though. looking back in the history, there wasn't anything um, documented. And I did go to Jean and ask her if she had the memo. Okay. And she did not have any, and uh, nor did DPW. And there was a yep. memo that was connected to that project back in 2012, April, April, May 2012. Okay. Um, that you know, put their hand up. Well, we need you to give us you to give us a copy of it, of what you have. I'm not, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to make sure that the wheel isn't broken. So what else do we need? That that would 
Right, and just, just confirmation that it's calculations yeah. meet the standards. Yep. They take into account the pipe. Steven, anything else? No, I'm good with that. David? Well, so if we could get those things from you for the next meeting. Really appreciate you working with us on this. I think they need to send, uh, get us a revised plan exactly. That yeah, shows. Well, we have that's we'll have that for the, yep. for the next meeting. Yeah, this <clears throat> this plan is preliminary. Yeah. All right. So just to address a comment you had made, you said you know we're going to remove a lot of trees mm -hmm. to, to put that in and. It needs to be done, but right now there's trees just falling from right. the right. water. Yeah, yeah, understood. So, I mean, that to take those trees out will save more trees down the road. Right. And I just wanted to make that point. It, yeah, that's probably something else that I could. I mean, it's going to cost me. The trees that fell are from the people who own this property, and they fell onto my property. So, if you look at the trees that fell, they're right. They're right here big giant stump there's a, there was a, there's probably five trees that are down yeah. all of the trees are from this property that fell onto my property so um but you know that if he came in he'd say to you that the reason they fell is because all the water came from your property and clobbered the roots and so they came down just like that's what lynn's worried about with with uh with her property, so I mean, I'm not. I didn't mean that. Well, I mean, if my, if my <laughs> house is here, and the next door neighbor's house is here, and his tree falls on my house. It's because my water leaked onto his tree. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how, I, I, how do I? Well, I've got standing water. I'm not. I well, didn't mean understand it. that we've had so since since you know August. Like, I, I own a bridge. What? Yeah, yeah, no, I. I, I got it. I'm I mean, sorry. I, so much water, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry it was my fault. I put the meeting out of control. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Ben. Thank you. All right, where do we go from here? 27 what? Lad Road. I don't think there's okay. anyone here for anything else. So, so we will have this on our agenda for our, our next meeting, June 4th. Um, I can give you a better time once we get closer if you want so you don't have to come in at the beginning just to let you know thanks for coming please come back so how, yeah. how long do you think this will take i mean i understand we're all working on it but i don't know the 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 hay bales are more for a sedimentation uh mitigation and i and i and i appreciate the fact that they put them down to do somewhat of a uh, water control yeah however you know where i how much did we actually stymie with the hay bales, yeah. I, I, I guess nobody really knows. I'm, I'm going to ask. I'm, I'm going to ask you to hold that question because I sent him home, and, okay. and, and I don't want to have okay. a conversation in nope. a meeting. No, nope. I totally get it. An applicant in front of him. Okay. No, nope. I totally yeah. get it. Yeah, I appreciate the question. Thanks. However, if you have those questions, you can submit them to the agent yeah. as an email. Okay. Yeah. And that will give us sort of a plan as to some questions. We need to get answers to. Yeah. Okay. We awesome. can share them with the owner. Thank you for the information. I didn't yeah. realize that. But but I think too, just to quickly add that I think that we're very close to a final plan with them. And then the next step is how do we get this implemented as soon as possible? I think, and that's what discussion we'll have next because we do have to issue them a permit. But I think we want to get this built this summer before i mean last year end of july is when we started to see a lot of the heavy rain again right. so i think we want to try to get this implemented as soon as possible and that's something that we've kind of started talking about trying to figure out a way to expedite this but not um forget about the permitting process and get the correct permitting for it too so so once we have a plan approvable we can get going on it so um. You guys. Sorry, I keep adding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quick, get up here, please. <laughs> How did your uh, mother go? How did How did your mother go? Uh, tough mothers in June. Spartan was oh, yeah, just was there. Spartan. Yeah, oh, the Spartan, Spartan was very good. Yeah. Good. Yep. Enjoyed by many. So. <laughs> good. Many crazies, right? 
Oh, you don't? You yeah, gotta... compared to myself, absolutely. I couldn't. I couldn't torture myself that way, but other people like to. So. Um. Okay. What? All right. What, what, what do we? Uh... So we had a site visit. So we had a complaint, and I've given, I've emailed a copy of the right. the letter to the commissioners. Um, we haven't obviously had any discussion since we've gone out last week and met you guys, but we did have a complaint about equipment in a resource area, near a resource area, Ed and I did a site visit on May 9th with yourselves. Um, there's some questions still with where the town line is and jurisdiction. We, you know, we discussed a surveyed plan that you have that we could look at to d distinguish where the town line is, um, which ultimately dictates where our jurisdiction is. We issued you a letter. I mean, based off the information we have, um, it looks like that is in Sturbridge. So, I mean, if you have a surveyed plan that shows otherwise, I think that'd be really useful to, to see. And then you might be having this conversation with the town of Charlton, not us, but um, we, we don't have that information. So I don't know if you have that information. Well, thanks um, thanks for having us and thanks for notifying us, okay, Becky. Before you get going, sure. could you introduce yourselves for the general public, please? Absolutely. Russ Jennings, 508 International. Amber Howard, 508 International. Um, unfortunately, we, we forwarded the letter um, and the information from our site visit to our attorney and the engineers and have posed the questions to them. Okay. Naturally, um, just like our attorney who's on vacation and took a while for him to st even start working on it. Um, so unfortunately, at this point in time, we haven't gotten any information other than what we had before, which isn't really much. So, All right. so we're, we're working on it, and as soon as we get that, we'll naturally forward along to you. Sorry, you had to come all the way in to tell no. us that. No, no that's all right. Yeah. And like we like we discussed before, any time uh, we're on the agenda and you notify us, great. We'd love to. So uh, um, thank you. You think you'd be able to have it for the next meeting? Uh, June fourth. Actually, I will be away on June fourth, um, but probably the meeting after. I'm sure. What about Amber? Could Amber bring it in? If it's just a, if it's a plan with. Uh, I don't. I don't know Amber's schedule. So. No, I think that. It's important that you're here. Okay. Yeah. So, so no. I guess until I mean, we know. I mean, if we get any information beforehand, okay. we'll, we'll so send we along. So we know where the town line is. I mean, technically, you know, a, a, a bridge crossing and trail construction is an activity that would require review. Um, oh, we absolutely. Didn't, we and didn't that's go why beyond, we do anything you know, just that one point where we took the photo. So, sure. I mean, there should be no work. Um, and I, I mean, I said that in our letter, too. Um, I did talk to the agent. Todd Gerard and Charlton today and you know he said based off the information he has he believes that's where the town line is too but he said yep. that if we were to go out we could go out do a site visit we could do a joint site visit with them if we needed to at that point I think I mean, it's important that you know we, we've we've told you you know the, not to do that work without checking with us first to see one if it's a reviewable activity um, and not to continue with any other work out there because we do think it's in Sturbridge based off of our information Right. Absolutely. I, I wish I had more time to try and maintain the trails, but I don't. So unfortunately, we won't we won't be out there at all. But so. All right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Yep. Take care. Thanks for coming in. What's next? Oh, a whole bunch of stuff. We haven't even touched our list, really. Yeah. <laughs> Can I grab, grab a glass of water? Okay. I know. Um, absolutely. I'll be right back. We've been through that with him before. This is, this is an ongoing thing. Okay. Six years. <coughs> it's always easy to blame it on the lawyer, right? Of course. This is actually helpful to see this. So the gentleman that was in, which, uh, the Buck, guy, Buck, Buck sorry, yeah. is that his property here? Mm, I think he's 11, 11 or nine. nine. He's nine maybe. Where? Oh, that's Chad's here? Chad's seven. I know Chad's seven because he has the big lot. And okay. I think Buck's here because look at. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. I mean, I think we're getting close to getting this. Yeah. Resolve, but we need confirmation from the engineer. I don't think that 
the two paragraphs in the email is sufficient. Yeah, no, you I know, agree. there's there's certain provisions in all these regulations of how they need to size it, et cetera, and we need to make sure it's done. Right. I've asked that. You know, it would have been nice to have the engineer here to 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 discuss their their work, but. I wonder if they left off the calculations about the roof deliberately. Well, they have avoided that question now frequently. Okay. All right. But, I mean, did you guys read the, the letter? I did email it. Okay. I thought it was well yep. done. Yep. It was Thanks. very muted. I think, you know, I, I don't think we need to, we should just wait till we get something maybe in months. I mean, this actually could be as enforceable long as some activity. Further activity yep. takes place. That's the key. You said no further activity. Yeah. There shouldn't be any. And the eyes and ears of the person who wrote that original letter will probably be there. So if there is more activity, I'm sure he'll notify you. We, we don't really know how much, how, if what else occurred down here. We didn't really go into the site too much, but. Well, yeah. part of the key is we know that GPS is accurate plus or minus five feet. We know that. It's not plus or minus 150 feet. Would you like me to, to set a date that I follow up with them or follow up every week or to the best of my abilities? Like, I, I just want to make sure we don't. Uh, he indicated that it would be ready in four weeks. Okay. I think he's got some friends at Mott and Marietta. He might be able to get us a little closer than five feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> so maybe like our June 18th meeting, so a month. We can't, we can't coddle the applicants. We have to let the applicants do their own work. Oh, he's not an applicant yet. This is well, not, no, no application in front of us for this No, work. but he's a violator. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right, what's next? All right, let's keep moving here. Let's yeah. go down the list. Uh, old business, no real update with the Mass DOT Quinnebog River. I mean, we have to keep just looking at it for storms um we haven't had any you know prolonged large rain events but um i mean i don't have the time right now to go out there once a week and kind of document the, the change going on if that tree's falling down mm -hmm. i'll do my best to keep going out there but that's just kind of at a standstill i think until we have proof of a violation there mass dot is not going to do anything about that Hamilton Rod and Gun. I don't have any update on anything I went from the parking lot yesterday, and it still looks really, really good. Good. Uh, Steve Halterman, I know, has been stopping by and kind of looking at it, looking <coughs> at it too. So, I mean, I'm assuming they should be starting work anytime soon. I know that their contract with Hamilton Rod and Gun Ramcos is expiring soon, so they really need to get this work done. They should be out there right now, getting all their stabilization done on everything that they're done with. And everything looked okay, at least in the lower parking lot. The upper parking lot is getting old, but I figured that they're going to move it because that's their access point yep. to do further work. Yep. I mean, I added the 173 Main Street on here cause in Mass DOT because I knew we were going to talk about it. I mean, it when, when you've been going to the Plimpton property, have you seen any work by uh, the Rod and Gun Club over in that uh, the new property they purchased? <clears throat> in that sand pit, that water filled sand pit to the left as you go in the main road on the Plimpton. Uh, what's the name of the people? The I, haven't, gone, I haven't driven Jolie, into yes. Plimpton. Yeah. Yeah. I have not driven into Plimpton. There's nothing happening in Plimpton. Nothing happening there. Okay. Because I go there all the He's time. He's the guy that goes there. I walk there practically every day and there's nothing yeah. happening. Okay. You notice the shed's gone, right? Huh? The shed's gone? Did you notice that? The Christmas tree farm part? The shed that part? was on the right-hand side. What about the Christmas tree farm? Well, we took the shed down like a month ago. I talked about it. I was... <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, so 173 Main Street, I mean, I still need to follow up with him because as Frank, Frank left, Frank was gonna work with him to help him like make sure he does his maintenance stuff that he hasn't been probably doing mm -hmm. with that system. What, in looking at this map, what concerns me about the issues with her property and the field, I see, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's a combination of the two properties, but I, I see that this 
stream coming down here and what we've observed from the, the coming from the mass DOT pipe, I mean, I, I think that that may be the primary issue yeah, with her property her. flooding. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how much we're going to address that with the runoff from that was, 179. That's kind of what I was trying to make people aware of. Right. But that's well, one of the reasons why I said we had to, yeah. we had to divide this into two separate parts. Yeah. We can't forget about the fact that one of these may be more responsible for the Sardi problem than the other one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and I think too, she made a good point that yeah. well, the mass DOT discharge hasn't really changed. No. I mean, it may have increased with road runoff from other roads contributing that come across 131. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's probably the same, but it's the gas station in that undersized right. basin that just discharges all that water and i don't know how to handle that because it went through dep was approved got a certificate of compliance unless you know he does some maintenance and it slows it down and infiltrates better through that little and tech dam in the middle a copy of the order of conditions that they issued yeah i believe i have that in the file have we reviewed it no it may be interesting to review it and see exactly what they say vis-a-vis -vis what is actually taking place on the ground. Yeah. Because after they issue a superseding order of conditions, it's up to the local CONCOM to enforce that superseding order. We can enforce it too, yes, but they are responsible for it too. But we know that they do not do site visits. No, I know. They issued a certificate of compliance for it. Yes, they, they close did. it out with not one single perpetual condition for a site that has a storm, a, a, a land use with a high pollutant load, right? With the stormwater management system, not no perpetual. We, conditions. we saw pollution floating in their yeah. basin. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so why wouldn't you send a note to them to the DEP? Oh, I copied them on my letter when I sent it. No, but we should send a note to DEP that pollution was observed, and we feel that this kind of a permit would be necessary for the town of Sturbridge to be able to, um, how can we put it, to be able to verify that we are doing the preservation required for the Wetland Protection Act. Because in fact, we see a violation and it's not being taken care of. I like that, yeah. yeah. Put it on DEP? Yep, it, the, it, nothing's gonna happen presumably, but at least we have the documentation that we I mean, I can also say too, it doesn't appear that it was implemented as proposed right. like where the two pipes come out um yeah. you know that it was an issue before and it, it needs still an maintenance issue. there's no conditions that require maintenance you know i, I mean i think it's important for us to get on the record with that right otherwise we don't have a leg to stand on when yeah. the uh, proverbial stuff hits the fan i i absolutely agree with that yep right. he's missing all the plantings on his site too that they probably didn't call out and i don't <laughs> think they were ever there no a confluence of three separate pipes that all end up in a ravine that's getting deeper by the day yep. and nobody wants to deal with it. I have, no. haven't got a call from DEP on any of the enforcement orders or letters that I nope. copied them on. This 27 Lad Road I copied them on, St. Anne's enforcement I copied them on. Not a word. Yep. Oh. All right. All right. Stephen and I went to DEP and Stephen had aerial photographs showing clearly that a group of trees, and we're talking about large acreage of trees had been felled recently, and there was no certificate of compliance, I'm sorry, there was no forest cutting plan that had been submitted for that particular piece of property, and DEP just glossed right over and said, well, that's okay. I, poor Stephen, that was one of his first indicators <laughs> of the DEP. Yeah. That was Actually, good. they didn't say it was okay. They just shrugged their shoulders and yeah, walked away. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. He wasn't really interested in the pictures, was no. he, Stephen? No. No, no follow-up whatsoever, nothing. Can we move? No. Let's yep. move it along. Uh, Hobbsburg Plaza, 100 Charlton Street. Update since our last meeting. The management company, one of the representatives, is here from Arizona. I am meeting him with the building commissioner tomorrow on site. Uh -huh. I asked them to have their, as their report, their engineer report indicated to have their geotechnical engineer look at it because that's going to dictate what they need to do. Yep. Because um, I'm like, you're going to probably need to file a notice of intent, but I don't know how much work you need to do. If you don't need to replace the whole wall, great, less work, 
let's we can figure out a plan but if you you know your your wall is like 10 feet from a wetland if that in some places we need to know it's not going to fall in right so provide that they said they wanted it three years ago or you should do it three years ago and i think we talked about this but i'm pretty sure that the issue is they backfilled with large boulders on the sides yeah and that those boulders are shifting and pushing yeah. the blocks out and that's why the, the wall's failing it probably was supposed to be backfilled with not what they did yeah, <laughs> yeah. They just, i don't know that the whole thing is backfilled with it i, I don't know no. and i don't think they necessarily well, obviously know, we saw the boulders oh, we saw the, the boulders yep. where the where the yep. blocks had already been knocked yep. over we saw well the old yeah. that's what was behind was them to bury boulders so that was probably what they had they probably had them on the site so when they made it they buried them right yeah <laughs> So we'll be going out there tomorrow to meet with him to look at that. I um, asked him, I said, when we last went out, when I last went out there with Nelson, the landscape company was out there spreading mulch. I'm like, they're probably more than capable to check your silt fence. They should be going out there checking it, making sure it's okay. Someone should be checking that weekly. I also asked for them to work on their stormwater management. Um, doesn't sound like they've probably done anything since they've taken over this property. I don't know how many years ago it's been. And I've given them information, given them a copy of the orders of conditions, given them information they asked who Walmart uses. I gave them that company's name. They could contact them because um, they need to work on that because we know that that's very important. So I'm yep. um, not sure where that stands, but they're not, they're not addressing that or haven't been addressing that. So One more item under old business, Dowdy Road, very quickly. The uh, body of water that we constantly look at yep. as you're going up the hill on the left-hand side has been gone now for a while. It's simply it's drained. evaporated or drained. And then if you go up to lot five, I've already submitted a form indicating that the um, patchwork of ground, which is about a quarter of an acre up on the slope has not, it, it was excavated last year but it has not been covered over with anything. So there's no seed and there's no hay cover. The hay bales have failed and there is some amount of silt along the edge of the roadway coming through the rock wall. So it, it needs to be fixed. Yeah. And I, did, and I did tell you that, but I did ask them to do that and he said he would. Obviously it sounds like he hasn't done that. He also Three said he was, he was gonna go and probably seed it because they're not doing anything up there in the near future, but I will. Yeah. So they're putting a road in? What? No, they're building one single family house. Everything's on hold right, right. now. Everything's on hold. That was going to be the site for a single family house. We pre we re-reviewed re two single family houses over there, but yes. I'm going to skip the letter permits real quick. Enforcement. I issued the enforcement order as requested at the last yeah. meeting. I went by again tonight. Nothing has taken place yet. Yep, I've spoken to the owner is actually the diocesan, however you say it, Cemeteries of Worcester. I sp spoke to Bob Ackerman there multiple times since I've issued that. I have a site visit with them tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. In the order, I said to put something up immediately. I mean, I didn't notice anything eroding off these bank and some of these have been there a long time. They're kind of vegetated. Um, I said we want to plan for it. I, you know, as discussed at the last meeting, a notice of intent. I don't think that they have any intention of submitting a notice of intent. So I wanted to bring that up. I think that they, this Brusso construction is going to be there as well. They'll remove it right away. They do a lot of work for the cemeteries. So we're going to work on a plan to remove that out of there. I also asked them, you know, to revegetate that area. I'm curious how the commission feels about allowing them. I mean, we want it removed as soon as possible, which I think that they're saying they will do right away. How you feel about, the, you know, that doesn't appear that they want to file a notice of intent and have orders of conditions for that. One you know. interesting question might be to ask them what they're going to do with the material as they remove it. Because it doesn't help mm -hmm. us if they simply move it further up or down on that stream bed. Right, and there's a stream on the other side too, so yeah. it's removing off site, yeah. I'd be concerned with them leveling that area and putting in more grave sites. Well, that isn't their intent. In the order I put to allow it to like native, uh, natively revegetate uh, some type uh, of seed mix uh, or let it yeah. restore yeah. it to. Yeah, without invasives, hopefully. Yeah. Even <laughs> if they just cover it with some sort of a 
wild grass seed or wild plant seed. Yeah. Wow. Something to make it green up. Based it, off my discussions so far, I mean, I think they're just going to do the bare minimum. So I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are. Do we just let them clean it up? That would be How do you? That's what I'd like to do. They have to clean it up. That's yeah. yeah. And remember that the largest volume of plant material in that area is skunk cabbage. No, I know. And, and we need to um, have something in the conditions saying that they cannot use this for well, that's where, future storage. Right. We won't have conditions if we don't have a permit right. or some type right. of... Yeah. I mean, I okay. think we have, we have documentation. I mean, I know that they've... You know, there was some documentation back in 2003. There was Glenn, I think, in 2016 sent them a memo via fax. That doesn't, there was a file. There was nothing in that file that they ever called back about it. So this will be the, like, the third, you know, in the enforcement order, I think, we'll have that on record. So that's up to the commission. I mean, we can just have them clean it up. We can have them file and clean it up. I don't know that we'll get a filing. Well, let's have them clean it up then. Okay. Anybody have a problem with that? Well, just like I said, I I want to I want to be able to apply some conditions to this. Yeah. So, yes, clean it up, but we need some mechanism for requiring them to not continue to do this. <laughs> Something in writing from them. Yeah. At least we have that. I don't. I agree with what are the conditions. Or put a note or to conditions. future agents that every 10 years you have to go back and file an enforcement order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I think the enforcement order caught their attention this time. Good. You know, called me immediately and... The first Although he's time like, oh, we'll just go out and clean up. I'm like, no, 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 you got to follow your order here. You can't just go out there and clean it up. And The first time they did take it out pretty quickly. Yeah, they took it right out for us, but it wasn't anywhere near as much. Oh, gosh, no. It wasn't. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot. Of that, what they have there is what they put there <laughs> since they cleaned it up the last <laughs> exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Where are we at now? Um, I have a request for extension of orders and conditions. This is 217 Bookfield Road. It's for a single family house. They have not started work. It's going to expire in August. They're asking for an extension. Since they haven't started work, I guess Excuse my me. recommendation would be maybe another three year extension for them. Sounds good. Anybody have a Fine. question? Please do it. <coughs> I have a special use application somewhere in my pile. Yes, let's agree to it. You sent it out to us. Did I? I believe I read it. Because yep. oh. you described what it was going to be like. Are you trying to influence the votes of the rest of the board? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, because it sounded like the guy had covered a whole bunch of bases, so. I don't think I read it at a trails committee meeting, but it's possible. Oh, it's right here. That's right. Well, it was acoustic research, so it would have sounded like something. <laughs> Not to waste paper, but I printed it so you wouldn't have to listen to me read it to you. This is an assistant professor. I'm going to read it anyways, or parts of it. Of uh, geography. Clark. At Clark. Thank you. There you go. They're using eco-acoustics to monitor habitat degradation. I, I forwarded it to Fish and Wildlife. They obviously have no concerns. It won't <laughs> impact any trails or anything. It's probably doesn't even necessarily need a special use permit, but I did have her fill out one. We moved away from trails to minimize visitors' privacy concerns and potential impacts on the recordings. Recording, recorders will be set to record for 48 hours and remove promptly. They will be attached with a lock cable without damaging the trees. They'll be analyzed to extract the acoustic complexity at different times of the days, capturing birds, manurin, and insect richness of the sites. 
Okay. I guess it would just ask maybe that they submit us their results afterwards so we yeah, can take a I, look at Yeah, I, I don't necessarily need to listen to the recordings. I can no. go in my backyard, but um, <laughs> but I would definitely like to, to view the results. Sign, please. Sign. <laughs> Sign, sit, long head. We're going to make you guys listen to 48 hours, 48 <laughs> yes, hours yeah. of recordings at one of our meetings. Right. Tweet! <laughs> What's the date today? 521? I'll fill it in, yeah. 19. Thank you. Adopt a trail, Dave. Did you want to? Yeah, the trails committee has requested that I bring up the fact that they would like to see the adopt a trail program canceled. And as the initiator of the adopt a trail program, some. Oh boy. Uh, 12 years ago, I heartily recommend that we eliminate the adopted trail program from its existence. Originally, it was scheduled so that we could encourage more people to come to the trails. And we had a couple of people that signed up for it and we made plaques and we put them up and we put reasons for them to have them. And every three years, they were supposed to reapply for them and they did minor maintenance on their section of the trail. That no longer is necessary, so I really think it would be wise for this board to agree to eliminate adopt a trail from our vocabulary. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? No. Oh, sounds good. All right, I'm gonna do the letter permits now. Steve, I don't want you to think I forgot about two lad roads, so yeah. I have that to talk about afterwards Good. too. I went Thank out you. there today. Thank you. 55 Beach Ave, Butch Jackson. This is a tree removal application. I do have an arborist report from Tom Chamberlain. Which I don't have in my file, but I know I have it saved here. I think if you have an arborist report, that's what we're supposed to go by, according to our. Yes. Yep. Yep. So um, I just didn't. I didn't print it, or I thought I printed it, but I guess I didn't. So three trees, two dead, one declining. You want to read this? I'll let you read it. Nope. We have replacements, two red maples, and two winterberry shrubs. Everybody all set with that? Four for three. What did it say? Two trees, two shrubs. Which one is declining? Three trees. This one's declining. So I can show you some more images. Dead, dead one's here, dead one's over here. And this is the one that's declining. He's saying very thin new leaf bud breakout, general branch dieback. So what is he thinking, that there's going to be rejuvenation as a result of taking down the other two? No, they want to take that one down, too. Okay. He's recommending, and I think also, too, I mean, there's nothing on the side, obviously, probably because there's a tree here. And yeah. It could be subject to wind throw maybe more, and there's some power lines right here. I took a couple of pictures, too. I ended up going back out there. Dave and I forgot about, well, I forgot about this one after our site visits. <laughs> we didn't get done till like, 1 o'clock on Tuesday. Yeah. It's all Dave's fault. You were I'm smart <laughs> leaving when you did. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, right, here's the two dead trees. Obviously, yep. no buds, no leaf. And then, then this one. We should agree to the plan as submitted by the arborist. There are a good Able? amount of trees Gentlemen? on this site. I guess um, where, where is the replanting plan? Do we have that? Um, yes. Sorry. Hold on. Um, I just want to see So here's the house. The lake wraps this way and then comes in front of the house. He's got trees over here. Yeah, that's the shoreline. So let me look at his key. The X's are the three trees to come out. This is a new red maple, new red maple, and then the two winterberry shrubs right here. Yep. These are existing trees, existing trees. All right. That's good. I guess shrubs. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Be nice to see some shrubs down by the water, but that's. Oh, over here? Yeah. Um, is there anything? It's a tiny lot. Is it? It's one of those. Yeah, see how we're, this is where one tree is? The bank's right there, actually. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's right here. So I think there is some yeah, it looks like little stuff something growing there. there, too. Okay. All right, I'm good with that. You want to vote on this? All in favor? Bingo. Okay. We have 232 Roy Road. <laughs> we'll do the tree, and then we'll talk about the road afterwards. <laughs> this is a... Mostly dead pine tree here. We got like two branches here. The Oops. house, the lake's on the other side. We have a lot of trees here, trees in the front. Yeah. Becky and I were unanimous. That sucker's got to go. Okay. It looks okay. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Done. And by the way, you notice we weren't looking for two to one replacement. You can see the other um, volumes of right. uh, trees and shrubs around it. Yeah, it's right. pretty far from the lake, room too. On the site. Yep. Next. Yep. Um, 296 Clark Road, another tree that Dave and I went to. We have to talk about Clark Road, too, after this. <sighs> this tree, here's one tree. They just want to prune a couple limbs here. Jesus Christ, it didn't look too good, did it? No. This is the tree they'd like to remove. Yeah. Um, you can see a lot of dye back on here. Um, there, you know, there is obviously leaf coming out on here. I have some pictures of the stump. I guess is that the Brian Carantos. Yeah, it's yeah. Brian Carantos. The concern here is see the rot here. Yeah, and it's yeah. a split that's trunk. coming in. Yeah. Like this one looks alive, but I guess maybe when you cut this, it's going to be all rot down here. So it's a little concerning. They'd like to take that one out. There's nothing written on here about replacement. I mean, we did have, eh, eh. this is a tree which they would just prune it a little bit. So we have a tree here, and then right next to the other tree, we do have a tree. I think I might have a better photo from the first, one of the first ones. So they're going to prune that one, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, let me go back out, sorry. They have some shrubs here. There's a tree here. I mean, I'm not, I can pull up the aerial. I'm not sure exactly where the property lines are here, but. It's a tight site. Yeah, they weren't proposing any replacement. Yeah. We have, you, you haven't shown us one tree, right? Huh? There's one tree you have not shown us that they're taking down. Just this one. That one. Just that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's got the two, okay. two stems. It's sandwiched in the middle. Good. So that, and then they allowed the pruning of the other one. Yep. The yeah. So the only question would be if we wanted them to put um, something else in here. Um, I don't know. I would, I would pass a cautionary tale about that because when you take that tree down, you're still going to have that 15-foot diameter radius around that tree base that is going to be all roots. Right. Okay. All right. And maybe what that'll do is encourage the other tree to leap out on the right-hand side. But, hmm. Maybe. What else? Oh, so we got to vote on that? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. So when we were out there, those are done. Um, well, actually, so DPW director had called me before about Clark Road and some drainage improvements. So we actually met Brian Karen's mother's boyfriend out there, Bob, and he kind of talked about, he showed us the drainage issues here. So Dave and I kind of took a look at it. They have a, a plan of what they'd like to, to do. It's a mental plan. Yeah. But I, you know, I, this is one thing I cautioned about, I think, last week, Beck. If we don't have an applicant in front of us, what are we going to do now? Have we got well, I think they're looking us? for feedback. We're not yeah. approving something. I think they just want feedback. So I guess I was just going to report what we saw out there and how they could move forward if they wanted to do something to resolve the issues. Okay. I mean, it's just, go ahead. Is that okay? I just feel that people should file or talk to you and then file rather you know have for us to have last week we had 
what without an applicant in front of us we we had about a 45 minute conversation on some last last meeting well, or something. right and I asked them I asked them to come to that meeting but so if they're not here well I didn't I didn't ask them to come to this because one I'm curious what your opinions are on this I don't think what they proposed is viable correct I don't either I think there's a solution but it has to be engineered well because the road is a wetland issue their filling has created all kinds of water problems on so the area. they want to do something with this section of the road is that the, what we're discussing yeah. where so the we dump have, truck is part where we put the dump truck that's not his property either so right here this is one of our favorite mass dot swales coming down crosses over here yeah. but we also have a wetland right here yeah. I don't think it's connected to this, but it's probably, you know, could be getting fed here or it's, you know, isolated. I, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. So there's a wetland here. It's overflowing on the road here. Water's coming this way, pooling up here. It's causing like a bunch of issues here. It's coming down here, washing this out. So there's a trench all the way down here, connecting here. There's a driveway that comes through right here. I guess there was a pipe where the driveway was. Yeah. It's not functioning anymore. So water probably overfilled this little wetland because it's probably been historically filled in, you know, here. Mm -hmm. It would come down, it could get into this trench and come down and exit here. But now it can't because of the driveway here. Like if they, one of the butters came out. So, you know, if the, the pipe is there or if it gets cleaned out or they add a pipe there, they could probably easily fix their problem. What they'd like to do is they'd like to dig a ditch from the wetland and drain it out into the road, which, right, it's not, you know, they could easily under, you know, roadway normal maintenance, I think, fix this pipe and solve their problem. I don't think that digging a ditch in a wetland and draining it is, <laughs> one, approvable or necessary. So well, that's why I wanted to talk about The first about suggestion it. was just digging a drainage swale to do the same thing as a pipe. And I said, well, what kind of a maintenance problem is that going to be? Yeah, I mean, I just don't anyway, think that. I think it has to be engineered. Because what you have is a confluence of water coming into that area. Yeah. Well, Chances us, of us letting them trench a wetland away. <laughs> right, I think that they just need to, you know, well, we haven't Pick seen up what overflows. Right. Want to go to it on our next site visit schedule? Yep. And look Have at it. Have they applied for, for no, something? Or are we just no. Gonna, um, no, I don't want to go unless they, they apply. They, they, if they've got something they want to do and apply, then I'll take a look at it. Well, I think that's what they want to know. They want me to look at it and say, yeah, that's you can do that. I mean, I, I think I can give them that feedback that I don't think that that's Chances are approvable. They can't do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if they want, this they is their option. They can fix their ditch and their pipe and just have the water naturally do what it was doing before yep. or have an engineered plan. Sounds like they need to do that anyway. Yeah. I mean, if, they, if there was a reason why that pipe was put in there, if the pipe isn't working, they need to fix it. So yeah. Yeah. are there neighbors complaining about it or is it? Yeah, the neighbor's the one who said if they unclog that pipe, it'll work like it used to. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I go. think that's kind of the... Who's the, the applicant? There's no applicant. It was like Brian Karen was talking to Butch at DPW about it. Oh, did I, did I save the pictures in here? Sorry. I took, I saved some pictures, hold on. So this is where the wetland is coming out on the road and it's flowing this way, wrapping yeah. around the corner. That's the wetland, pretty full. Yeah. So this is where there's a swale that comes down here to the DOT ditch, which comes down, I think, here. So if they unclog that, I don't have the best photo, sorry. But there's a lot of water coming down the road here. That's, that's an mass, issue too, but that's not our... That's the Mass Pike right there? Yeah. Yes. Mass Pike, right. yep. Right. And I did not want to go walk up that swale and look at it and the lake is right behind you yeah so this is what's Oof. happening the neighbors is the neighbor across the way you can understand complaints for that yeah yeah but i think if they 
fixed that problem, yep. but it's still going to come up What's on the, the road right the here. Italian American Club? Okay. Oh, yeah, on the other side. The other side. At the risk of agreeing with Ed, we're not engineers and we're not supposed to engineer the process for them. We don't even know what they want to do with their problem. They have a problem that requires an engineer, they have to hire an engineer. Or they have to go to somebody with expertise in the area and say, what would well, you I do? Well, I think DPW said they'd help them, and that was the solution that was yeah, right. given. Yeah, right. And it sounds Hong Kong said no. <laughs> well, no, it sounds to me like they should start with cleaning out the pipe, mm -hmm. see if that resolves the issue. Um, and if they want to do something else, they're going to need to file with us. Right? Good peacemaking. Good. Yeah. Yes. We should definitely not be going out there until we get something from them. This is my point, yeah. yeah. That, no, that's fine. I just... Okay, what's next? And I think you need to tell them that, that Becky, I don't think you should... Don't be a good guy and say, well, I'll come out and I'll help. I'll talk about it over. I think you just need to say, deal with it and then get <clears throat> get back with us on with, with something on paper. Yeah, I mean, in some of these things, too... I mean, I, we weren't going out there to look at it. He just happened to bring it up when we were out there. I was going to go out there, and I probably would have said exactly what we're saying is one need to file if you want to work in that wetland. You probably can't ditch it because you're going to drain it, come up with a solution. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let them know, but, it, you know, I get a lot of requests from people looking for advice on how to move forward, and some things, if they're not clear, I like to ask Guys. One of the things that's interesting, though, is that the person who brought us out to look at the potential solution did not want Becky to walk down on the beach to see the damage that had been done. It was a neighbor who came out and took Becky down to the beach to see the damage. Well, yep. no, we weren't looking at the damage, but I guess this, the, historically there was probably a stream that came out of that wetland and yeah. went down before they built all those houses. Right. Not, you know, it was piped underneath there or something. There's also a difference between a contractor and a homeowner. Oh, I know. But I think DPW offered to do the yeah. work for them. That's where the, the rub came. What? DPW instituted the whole thing. Yeah, well. Instigated, sorry, not instituted. <laughs> Two wow. Lad Road. I had printed this. So, so um, I, I'll give some background on this. I believe it was Saturday, I heard a bunch of uh, chainsaw work going on and I didn't investigate immediately, but um, I don't know, whatever time I sent that email on Saturday, I walked down uh, to this property and he had a backhoe in his driveway and they were pulling trees that had been cut down um, out from the side of his house here um so i explained to him i knew about the wetland down here mm -hmm. um but i wasn't sure what was in the property here and it turns out this is a, this looks like it's all wetland yes. right here yeah um within you know 25 feet of his house probably or at least 50 feet of his house and and he was clearing in the wetland so i told him um he he said at that point he was all done cutting trees he was just in the process of pulling the trees out of the wetland. I told him to stop all work. Don't pull any more trees out until mm -hmm. um, you had a chance to look at it. Yeah. So well, you can so, take over from there. Yeah, he did call. He called me yesterday. I mean, I looked at it here. And, of course, like, you know, you can't tell that that's necessarily a wetland there. Right. I was like, okay. And I kind of explained him, like, I really need to come out and look at it. Yeah. Can I come out? And he said, yeah. So I went out this morning um, and looked at it. There was nobody there when I went out. So I have some photos so it's definitely this is the edge of the driveway yep it drops off down here this is wet here yep you can see down here i mean it's not that you can't tell that well from the photos but this is all wet here behind here um you mean that stream comes back here he's got a couple of pipes here discharging probably oh, so here's the wetland facing towards Lad Road. You can see it does go through this whole area. So he cut a few trees down in that yep. area. Obviously, it was wet when they were working on it. Right. Says he didn't know. These are pipes. One, two, three. Um, water was coming out of these. It must be picking up 
groundwater. So those come, yeah. So that comes from his cellar. Yep. And it is groundwater underneath the house. Yeah, it's permanent drains. Yeah. 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 And it's constantly Basically. flowing. It's constantly flowing. This so is this is standing water in here. It looks, yep. it's almost like there's a stream that has yeah. formed here, and yep. probably wow. this is all. His house sits on fill. So whoever built originally filled, and it was probably a wetland there. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I was and, thinking. Yeah. And, yeah. and so now he's got these pipes that are that are draining the water and and he said they're flowing all the time yeah so um and you can see it's wet here from that but then this mm -hmm. you know it flows this way but this also backfills up here this is the wetland going towards lad road um pretty big area and i went behind and walked through and you can see you know the the stream that that's right. developed and that comes through that area so exactly so we should um make a side visit yeah, I, I suggest that we visit. I uh, my recommendation would be, um, I don't know what I asked him what he was planning to do with that, and he said the reason why he cut the trees was they were, they were overhanging the house, and that he was worried about them coming down in the house, and that's why he cut the trees. Um, I don't I don't know without looking at aerial photos, you know what the situation was. We don't we can't see him now. There were quite a number of trees. There was at least a dozen. I didn't count the. I count, I counted the pile by the road, and I don't know if some of those were large limbs off of it, and there was at least twelve or so there. But right. then there was more stockpiled on the site, and the large pine in the back too. Yeah. So, so um, I think we need to have him rec, you know, reclaim. It definitely no work in that way because it's yeah. wetland basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's going to need to do some replanting there. Yeah, and I think how we do that is the same way we did it with the gentleman across the street. You did it before. File a notice of intent with a restoration plan, you know, get orders of conditions, yeah, let's get, get that planted. Look at it. Yeah, I, I don't, there was no contractor involved as far as I could tell. Um, they, there was another gentleman there with the backhoe who lives down the street. So I think. Um, they were just doing it themselves. Th yeah, they were just doing it themselves. So there wasn't a licensed yeah. so, contractor involved, as far as I could tell. I mean, I, I will um, call him and let him know because I said I was going to go out there and we discuss it at our meeting tonight. Um, I'll let him know we'll do a site visit, but I think I need to follow up with a letter too, just saying that it was a violation. Yep. If he's cooperative, I don't know that we need to take official enforcement at this time, but that's up to you. I think if we can keep them cooperating, do the notice of intent. If we don't get cooperation, it could result in enforcement action. Yeah. I think that's I, I think that's how we handle it. Because when I yeah. talked to him, he was very, um, I, I didn't Apologetic. get the sense at yeah. all that that he realized that this was not supposed to happen. And so I I don't think we should start finding him unless yeah. he unless <laughs> he does it, you know, agree to, all right. to we'll, fix the situation. We'll put him on for a site visit, tell him we're coming out. Tuesday, okay. That's something every week lately. I know. All right. All right. Um, I have one more item on here, but I have also, so when Dave and I went out to Roy Road to look at that tree, you know, we looked at Roy Road, but then we also noticed too, I mean, the gentleman that came in last time lives at 226, which has an open permit, which I knew that because when he called, he didn't say what he was calling about originally, about Roy Road and Millings. So I pulled out his file and I said, oh, just so you know, you have an open permit, you need to close that out um, mm -hmm. for when you redid your house and everything. So when we went by his property, which is right on top of the wetland, we noticed a driveway that didn't appear to be in the plan. So I didn't take any pictures when we were out there. So I took some pictures today. And I'll remind you of where this is and which house it is. Remember the guy that ended up saying those two holes that you saw out back? Yeah. Were for the poles for my tennis courts? Yeah. Well, it's that house. Yeah. No, I, I knew it was. I don't know why I knew it was, but I think oh, it was so because of the kid, right? So this is the plan. Okay, we have the wetland here. Right. He's got they had a couple sheds here. I mean, I don't, don't know yeah. if they've changed. I haven't looked at my photos. He had a proposed driveway going into a garage with the house here. Right. Mm -hmm. This this is the lawn with the limited work line. I'm assuming this, yep. I don't know what this was. Doesn't show trees or anything on here. That's a good point. There's a couple of trees here. There's nothing shown, a couple of trees here. Maybe that's a telephone pole. Yeah. 
Um, so these are the photos that were in the file that Glenn must have taken when this filing came in. So here's the wetland. This must have been yeah. composting in the wetland. Yeah. You probably remember. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that was. Here's one of the sheds. Oh, I remember this site. Remember oh, this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. There's some a tree photo. Here's another tree. So this I think is kind of important. So here's the wetland back here. Yeah. The driveway comes in right around. Well, it looks like. Oops. Yeah. This, this was the guy that needed to cut down the trees in order to get the trees. truck in. Yeah. 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 To plan his house. So, yeah, but wait until you see what he did. All right. So here's the. Yard. This is you got to use your lawn. pointer because your finger doesn't do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the wetland back here. It's one, two, three, four trees there. Here's the wetland. Yep. Here's the driveway. Here's that telephone pole. Yep. There's that roll off box. Yep. That yep. was I think there in the last photo. So we still have some trees around here. That's where the driveway goes. Is a shed there. This is all wood chips. I don't know what this was before, but here's the driveway. There's a couple of trees here in front of the shed. Wait, this is the photo you just took? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I should go back to that other one that was kind of almost yeah. the same. I don't know where that was. It's this one. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the telephone pole. Yeah. Yeah. Now look. Yeah. So, one, two. It's definitely a tree missing. Uh, so, right. And this is an asphalt milling driveway. So, you know. Okay. So, I mean, I think we need to ask. So, he was supposed to... That's how they brought the, the house in. Oh, wow. So he, I think he put the millings down in order to be able to drive the heavy equipment in. In here? But I, it was my understanding. I thought I remembered that that was supposed to be removed after the fact. I thought so, too. That that was just going to be a temporary... I th and I'm pretty sure he said gravel. He was going to put down gravel or something or wood chips. or I don't so remember. So where did he put millings down? Yeah. And made a driveway out of it. But now Sounds it's like. a roundabout. Now it is a U-shaped yeah. driveway. Yeah. Right next to the, the wetland. Yeah. Almost in. Yeah. Okay, well, that's going to... We're going to have to talk about that. And he requested us to go look at it. Um, no. <laughs> Across the street. How would well, you like me to proceed? Well... If we're going to look at a violation, we've got to do a site visit first to take a look at it. And this permit expires this year, so all right. We, we had a whole lot of discussion about this site. This, yeah, no, we, this, this was a big deal. Yeah. Um, so I so asked him to meet us out there. We'd like to take a look at it. We went down there to look at the tree. We noticed that. You guys had concerns. Yeah. yeah. Becky okay. also had a concern when we were on site that the two outbuildings may have been moved closer to the wetlands. I don't. They, that they I were don't almost know. in I the. Not walk out there. They were almost in the wetland before, so I don't know that they could have gotten any closer without. And I can look at the stilts. plans in the photos and see if they moved. I didn't have a chance to really do that. They might not have. But I don't. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have uh, any aerial imagery that we could review too? Maybe the most recent. Um, maybe not. I don't think we have anything. I can look back. Yeah, take take a look and see if there's something that shows this current state. Current, okay. You're going to get your wish. What the week? All right. Well, and before that, I'll see if you can meet us out there next Tuesday. We can make um, it first, I guess. That will probably happen. If not, we're well, gonna take a look anyways. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, speaking of site visits, um, I'll send you information. I mean, I haven't gone through it a lot. Um, not on our agenda, but 130, 140 Brookfield, uh, not Fisk Hill Road. You guys did an ORAD for that site before with Glenn Kravosky. I think I issued the ORAD. You guys approved it before I started. But there was a question about there was a poten couple potential vernal pools out there. Mm -hmm. So there's three pools that he's looked at. He submitted an RDA. I didn't really know what to have him submit because it's more looking at under our local bylaw. Yeah. Um, he is going to certify two of the pools. One of them 
there's he's trying to document or show a fish population in there. So yeah, I'm trying, does that. yeah. So I'm trying to get a lot of feedback from my contact at Natural Heritage because, you know, you can still have egg masses in there, and of course it's common shiner. He um, keeps the common shiners in his in his toilet at home. <laughs> So oh, no. that's on our next agenda. I think that we should go there. Um, I, I mean, I, I'd like to refer to my contact at Natural Heritage, who's the vernal pool biologist, and maybe, you know, I know he's really busy right now. Right. But I'm like, do you have a protocol? Because even when Glenn called me in the winter, I'm like, for all of those, we should have a protocol. Yep. When you're going to start going out there and dip netting, when you're going to do all these things. The two pools he can certify, not worried about the one with the fish population. He hasn't showed that he's been, he just... Thinks, I think he thinks he found fish and he's done, but, you know, my contact saying, you know, should still be looking for egg masses right, in right. there, and I don't think he's done that. So just... Where is that? Are you one? aware? 130, 140 Fiskill? I know. Are they all right there? This one's right by the road. I think it's easy to get to. Yeah. But I think, in, you know, it's hard wood frog egg masses. Some you might be able to find. They've already hatched out most places, so... We're now at the end, but I did tell him in the winter, you know, let's talk about it. Let's get a protocol in place. So it's something that, you know, we would need to prove ahead of time. That's what we did at Natural Heritage Program when we did rare species surveys. You have a protocol in place ahead of time. It's approved by everyone. You follow that. Well, you we don't can, find what you're looking for. So we can wait till next year now at this point, right? For that one? Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe. All right. But all right. So I'm going to put that on our site visit checkbook list too, but I just wanted to make you aware. Tasqua Shore Road, Millings. Oh, I've been yes. working with, and actually Raul is helping out, which is great because Raul was on, was the lead for the betterment process for paving Mountain Brook, Shore Road, mm -hmm. Long Ave, whatever else oh, really? is down there. So Raul has offered to meet you with. That, right? No, I forgot that. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, you knew it. Way back in yeah. the dark ages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have uh, Mr. Allard on South Shore Road who's interested in trying to get the road paved and betterment process, starting that. So I'm going to meet with him. I have a gentleman on Tantasqua Shore Road that I've been working with. Um, he's a new resident there about the betterment process and maybe trying to get an association together. So we're going to meet on Friday afternoon um, on Tantasqua Shore to discuss that. I mean, I, I'm interested because I, I don't know the aspect of forming their association and stuff like that and i said i'd help them get information and letters or whatever so we're trying to work towards getting maybe those roads paved which i think would be a good outcome be a great outcome so a month or so ago dpw director butch had asked me about um you know using the millings which we've talked about before on some of the roads i said you know it's something you guys have concerns with one you're going to need to file for it if you want to do it within our jurisdiction, too. It's concerned with contaminants, et cetera, leaching, things like that, that we need to get a better understanding of. Um, they may, you know, not approve that use or something. But I specifically remember talking to him about Tintasco Shore Road because I knew it needed to be crowned, and we have a lot of erosion issues and sediment getting down there. Um, and I just said with the millings, and he said he wouldn't put them in our areas of jurisdiction, and I thought it was clear where our areas were, and I think I probably mentioned the 200 foot buffer zone. But um, when I spoke to my contact on Tantasqua Shore, he said, oh, I'd surprise the town put millings down on the road because wouldn't you be concerned with, you know, oil and other contaminants coming off that into the lake? So he wasn't aware that that portion was within our jurisdiction. You put millings down on it. Oh, really? um, and the question wasn't asked before putting the millings down? Not specifically about that road. Like, if he would have given me a did list, you, and did, I didn't ask for a list at that time because I thought it was clear. Did you ask which for that letter that, that, that we received? The email? Or was that the email? Or was that... Um, so after I, um, after I found out about that, I sent him an email asking about the Tantasco Shore. And he said, yes, I put him down there. I said, well, the commission's going to have concerns. Um, this is why, one, you would need to file, two, we don't know, you know, with millings of concern for contaminants or whatnot that we're still kind of looking into. Um, what else did I say? I, I asked for what other roads it might have been put down on, and I did indicate that, you know, it's in with your jurisdiction, and you could ask to have those, those removed. It wasn't permitted. So that was <coughs> the response 
I mean, I got a response saying what the roads were, et cetera, and then I got that response afterwards. There has been some additional correspondence um, since that, that one. I did talk to him today about it a little bit more. But the problem with his letter, from my point of view, is that it didn't address impact whatsoever. Right. Right. Period. It, it's Absolutely. like... We, we, it's like this. What the seven thirty seven is that? You know, it's well, a perfectly good yeah. jet. Well, and using, you know, this is common practice by Mass DOT to put this stuff, you yeah. know, everywhere. I, I don't think that that's uh, should be used as as an no. argument as to why they should do yeah. it because yep. that's not an argument <laughs> for our committee. So. Right. I didn't know if you read the email. It sounds like most of you did, but I printed it. I also printed out some information. One, I think you already have this one um, that I found, and I also found. It's the first one if you click on. Oh no, I know. Well, yeah. You know, I, I didn't go very far. <laughs> well, what I noticed is there's a lot. There's all kind. There are a ton of documentation out there right. about this, but a lot of it is written by the asphalt lobbyists yep. and the right. asphalt companies and well, yeah <laughs> so i have also new jersey's dep came out with a guidance document mm -hmm. and i think that's pretty useful yeah. that one um but i did print these and, and i tend to agree with their conclusions and that is i think i based on everything that i looked at and i spent quite a bit of time looking at this i, I sent you guys something that was done by yes. an undergrad at yep. wpi so you know um not a phd but but just that simple study showed that this, that the tailings leach um, yeah. some pretty nasty chemicals, and so I'm a, I'm of the opinion that we shouldn't allow this. We shouldn't set a precedent and say they can do this within, you know, x amount of feet from our from a wetland. Yeah, if we're going to do that, and I and I agree with you completely from from what I've seen, although I have done very little. I, I, first of all, there's an illogic between. Um, them saying that it's dormant, right, and yet it's got to bond together in order to. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as you, I get an illogic, I have a problem. So, but um, I think we need to tell we need to get a letter out to the lake associations, tell them not to use the. T I mean, really, this we'd like to have them char. If that, if that, if not that, then gravel or stone. Right. Um, but not tailings. Not tailings, absolutely. Well, there are some really fine exceptions. If you put the tailings down correctly, they're okay. perfectly usable. Yeah, we went through, the, yeah, this has the five uses in, in it, talking about yeah. putting them down as a base right. and a top over. The, yep. the, no argument with any of that. In 2013, the EPA of the state of New Jersey issued a ruling, and the ruling stays today in 2019 in New Jersey. And under that ruling, there are prohibited uses. Prohibited uses. There's all this other permitted stuff about recycled asphalt paving or wrap, right. as everybody knows it as. Yep. The following uses of wrap are prohibited, are prohibited as a final surfacing material, unless it's found with asphalt emulsion or paved with hot mix asphalt or Portland cement. In other words, it's yeah. got to have asphalt on top of it, and unless such use is in conjunction with the repair, maintenance, and replacement of an existing vehicular paved surface roadway or parking lot upon which it will be pressed in. In other words, they want a yeah. 30,000 or 40,000 pound steamroller to go across it. Right. And in our if town, we don't use a steamroller. I don't think we have one. I know they have some type of roller. Rolling. I know that they've rolled what they've put out there, suppose, supposedly, or I was told that. So I don't know what they have, but they have some type of roller. We have wetlands on both sides of Ladd Road. Between 15 and 20 years, on a cycle, they put down a limited amount of gravel to fill up all the holes, and then they spray it with an emulsion, which I assume is a bituminous emulsion. There is no packing that takes place. And it holds right. place because we have no traffic on Ladd Road. And there's only two houses. Yeah. Well, Three. no traffic, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but basically no traffic. So it can last for 15 to 20 years. That doesn't say that it's not breaking down and going into the wetlands on both sides of the road. Right. 
So I wouldn't. Um, I went by there. Obviously, I took some pictures, and then I also he said lead mine road was one of the ones he did it on. And I went by there, and I took some pictures of the edge of the road because water's coming down yeah. the sides of the roads, and it's all broken up on the edges. So it's Jeez. not it's not solving the problem on the the edges, and it's actually breaking up and going to be washing down. Exactly. Yep. But that's the problem. And you know that every time a car goes off the edge of the roadway, which may be when cars pass one another, one tire or another goes off, it breaks off a little bit more of that material, yeah. only to further get broken down by more water. Thank God we don't have snow and plow those roads. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that's right. We had a beautiful winter. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, sorry, where was I going with this? I got sidetracked there. After All right, so I reached out to um, MACC. Mm -hmm. They're not aware that there's any guidance. She gave me a contact at DEP, the head of Bureau of Waste. I called him, left a message. He called me back today. I missed him, so I will continue to follow up with him. Yeah. He gave me a little bit of information, but it doesn't sound like our DEP has specific guidance. I also reached out to my contact at our circuit writer at DEP in the central region. It doesn't sound like there's specific guidance from our DEP like New Jersey has. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I think maybe if we review what New Jersey has, too, which sounds like we have a little bit. They also say that they would allow it to be used if there was a, a binder put together and it acts like pavement. Is that something we can the, look into and think about, too? Or The problem with that is what we just said, that the yep. edges of the road, um, I'm just not... I'm, I'm not convinced that even with a binder, that's going to break edges, down. The edges would even gonna break down, and it's going to go wash right into whatever. Unless they could put a curb body. on it, but I know we don't have uh, a curb machine too. Right. But outside of our jurisdiction, I'm fine with this. But I just, I don't think. Yeah. It's plus the, uh, I think you have to make people aware of, of the danger of the dust. Yeah. Yeah. That that's unbelievable. Yeah, and and it's it's much worse for this situation yeah. where you're not with you know it's not asphalt, it's not yeah. you know yeah. completely bound. Yeah. Those it's, guys that are taking this stuff up, they must die. They must drop yeah. those flies, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I think they they can use it to make new asphalt too. Right. Yeah. And that yeah. would be okay yeah. because it's asphalt. We would never know. In the right. New, in the New Jersey protocol from EPA, it strongly suggests that that be one of the primary uses. And they give two occasions when you can use it. And the two occasions are a hot mix or yeah. a cold mix that's being pressed. Hmm. Yeah. Either one is inside of a mill. Yeah. All we have to do to argue the point is that all of the bituminous products are made as a direct result of distilling oil. You distill the oil, you bubble it off, you take off the gas, you take off the protein, you take off the butane, and down at the very bottom, you get a sludge-like material that is the stuff we use to spray on roads. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right, so we're all in agreement. Well, I think, um, that's why Stephen brought it up. He said it's mostly the highway departments that are putting this stuff out and the, the people who actually make it. Right. Yeah. Well, and there's, there's, there's a ton of it around. Yeah. When these, and, and it isn't, hasn't been, in my opinion, as long as... as um, Butch said that this has been really going on. It's been going on for like 15 years. That's all I can remember it. Not long, right? Yeah. And those machines. Oh, my God. You know. Yeah. All right. Could we, the next meeting, put it on our agenda as a discussion agenda, and even if the pub, if, if public wants to come in and, okay. and come prepared? I'd like to put together a document where we, we won the the lake associations about the use of it um, and you know come up with a, how how we want to approach it right we have to be cautious though Ed because if we warn the lakes association about it and DPW says they want to use it we're just we're setting ourselves up to have a monumental battle with the people in the middle and I don't think we want to do that. It's well, like pesticides and herbicides. Well, no, we should iron it out ahead of time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Have, oh, you mean don't you just have the meeting? Where we talk with DPW about it. Because if we don't get them to agree, this thing is not going to move forward. Well, I think... But I disagree. If we put it in our town bylaw that we that the that we, that lakes and... Uh, we don't want it anywhere near well, our wetlands. I think that that's the, it. I think that the first step is to talk with DPW about it, 
And if they really don't want to do anything or they cannot accept the arguments that we're making, then the next step would be to try to put it before the public so that we can gain public support and go to town meeting with it. Because I think we have to work with the DPW. They're the ones that are using it and applying it. I'm not, I'm not saying we don't need to work with them. I think they're probably okay at this point if we say we don't want to use, and if he doesn't say okay, then we have that discussion, but we have it on these roads now, yeah. and the residents are very happy to have it because it's made the road better. So I think yeah. the problem is they've already offered it to residents. We had Roy Road yeah. resident here last meeting. Right. Um, what do we want to happen with what's there now, too, and that needs to be... I like that approach that we say we don't want to do this and then see what happens. Yeah. If DPW comes back and says we Well, we've we got that to. list of, of problems that it creates for the lakes. Right. You start telling them that. Oh, yeah, lead in your water. Yeah. You know. So can we say that at this time we would like to use the guidance document from New Jersey. Do we feel comfortable? Is the language in there? I think I'd like to re read. The, okay. I, well, I think that. He, he, what do you think? Because I, because I'd I, like to read it. From what I read, it that seemed perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So what I, I guess what I would say know. is that yeah. we're going to review what guidance documents we can find from environmental. Yeah. Well, that's what we what's what we told him yeah. at the meeting. Right. That we were going to go forward and find out what. Yeah. Um, but right, one, don't put any more millings down. And what about the millings that are already out there? No, don't Leave even worry right about now. it. You know, okay. Just let's we don't need a fight. One piece of the apple at a time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I just want to make sure because I know I'm going to be asked these questions. So. What's this? But Butch's letter is. Oh. You know, it, it's a very nice letter, but it just says we're using it. Right. And it, as far as we know, none of my men have come back dead. I mean, you know, it's basically... Yeah, but that was the smoker's argument for 30 years. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. DDT. <laughs> My father stockpiled it. What else? Agent's report. That was all the, that was all the items. All right. okay. quick. Now, I, I would actually would ask because, you know, I know everyone's going to kind of research some more millings. Can you... Anyone want to take a lead at drafting a letter to Lake Association? I mean, I would I would do it, but I'm by myself, and it's been six weeks I've been by myself. And yeah, I'll do that for the next yeah. meeting. I'll, I'll I'll send you a copy for us. Okay, and then yeah, I can. There. I'd be happy to review something. I yeah. don't have a lot of time to yeah. write something, but thank you. And you want right. us to still continue looking for other documentation? Yeah, anything um, that you sent. You know, I'll send you guys out. Within a week, I'll send you out something. Okay. okay. Before we adjourn, I just want to make one comment about the um, NHDES or MPDS huh? file that you sent us. It's a MPDES report. The National Pollution for the Spencer Wastewater Treatment thing. You sent us a copy of the report. Not recently. No? I didn't send it. I don't think so. I thought you had sent it because Ed was looking for it and it was on my email today. <laughs> okay. Because my question was, it said that this report will be viable on the date of the signatures above. And so I went back to 17 pages to page one and there were no signatures on that puppy. <laughs> but if, if you don't have it, Ed, I will gladly send it to you because you've been asking for it. It's a study where it indicates the values that Spencer has to meet and has been meeting. Yeah, if you got it, I'd like to read it. Send it to yeah. you. Mr. Chair, I make a motion Name to adjourn. Chair. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, you want to have a second? I'll do that too. I don't care. Do we have a second on the motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor. Wow. You, one, you guys, one minute. Um, get